gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Minnesota Sports Talk presenting Under the Lights with your hosts, Justin and Dave, next in three, two, one. Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Minnesota Sports Talk bringing you Under the Lights with Justin and Dave. We got Johnny B. Good in the house. That's what I call him. I don't know what you call him, but we'll call him something a little bit later if we don't like what he has to say. Johnny, introduce yourself. They haven't heard you already. Tell them where they can find you. Yeah, how we doing, guys? Thanks for having me back. Um, you can find my work on uh, purplepainforum.com slash John B 8084. Remember that because it's Chris Carter's number and Randy Moss's number. Um, and you can there find you the go. Daily Skull podcast on Spotify. Um, that's all. Daily Skull. You can also find me right after this show, Tuesdays at 8, uh, a show called Necessary Roughness. We talk all things NFL. Awesome. Daily Skull. I'm gonna have to, I'll put that up a little bit later. All right. We had uh, we had a day in the press today. We had Quasi Dalfamensa regurgitating all sorts of good stuff. Um, I, uh, unfortunately worked like crazy today and just read it. Um, I didn't even want to bother watching the video. I just wanted the highlights. Uh, Justin, what did you take? Uh, what did you take away from it today? Well, I took away from it that it, he is a very, very, very breath of fresh air from Rick Spielman. I will definitely say that. Um, you get the impression that you actually trust and believe what Quasey has to say. Whereas when, when it was Rick Spielman, you knew, he was saying everything he can to completely deceive what he was really thinking, which is fine. I get it. General manager's got to do, you, you can't just telegraph your playbook. You can't just tell everybody what you're really thinking, but Quasi does it in a way that actually makes some sense that you can tell is just not a total crock of baloney. And, you know, I, I, I found it, um, I found it very refreshing. You know, obviously you got different settings where at the beginning of the day, you know, when he's talking to the group media, he's got one set of comments and answers. And then when he's being interviewed by individuals, he's got different comments and sense, which, OK, that's generally how it works. But having said all that, no, I thought he was really, really good. I think we may have just a talking picture of Justin. I don't know. Uh, are you are you able to see him move, John? I'm not on my end. No, um, you may want to jump out, jump back in again, Justin, while I get what, um, you know, get what John's thinking of it. You're moving a little bit, but not a lot. Audio was good. Uh, tell me, about, did you get a chance to see any of the uh, any of the news coming out of the uh, combine? Yeah, it was. Um, <clears throat> and I like what Justin was saying. Like it is sort of different than the Spielman isms that we used to get because he was like, in in hindsight, he was almost just trying to misdirect, like directly trying to misdirect whoever was was listening. Like it was like a complete curveball. Um, and Quasey, I feel like he's not telling us what he's going to do, obviously, but I think he just says a lot without saying much, um, more than just saying the opposite of what he's actually thinking. He kind of, he kind of dances around the question a little bit, um, and, and, you know, says some positive things, but it's less of, uh, of like a diversion. I feel like than with, than with Spielman, it, it felt a, really disingenuous sometimes. Um, but I like, I like Quasi's just, and O'Connell has the same thing. They, they just both do so well at saying a lot without saying much. So when they get these hard hitting questions, Hey, what are you going to do with, um, you know, Kirk's contract? What are you going to do with, uh, such and such player? They just have such a way of like eloquently dancing around the question without really answering it. Um, but also giving you a little bit of a peek behind the veil. Um, like his answer to uh, the Kirk question, uh, Kirk Cousins prompt, he just kept saying that from an analytical standpoint, uh, th there's a certain threshold that your starting quarterback needs to meet um, in order for you to have a chance to be successful. And he, and he feels like Kirk meets that threshold. Um, so One of the, uh, um, let me, uh, uh, Mary Fist, thanks for showing up. I uh, appreciate coming. Thanks for uh, finding me uh, a month ago and sticking with me. Uh, Raymond, good to see you again. 
Oh, hey, friends already. Look at these guys. Um, Michael, <laughs> hello, everyone. Nice. Thanks for showing up, Michael. Uh, doing good, Mary. 58 degrees tomorrow. How are you doing these days? Well, it's about 85, 90 here in Florida. So I don't know. What's it, what's it going on in your land? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of emojis. Now, kind of what you're talking about, um, I totally agree. Um, Rick Spielman didn't say a whole lot of anything when he was talking. And he would get actually upset if he like he was you know potentially give away a secret. Yep. yep. I wasn't too worried about that because looking back in hindsight, the the way we got like a Harrison Smith, where he says they ghosted me, they didn't talk to me after the combine. I didn't, I had no idea I was going to Minnesota. Or they were even interested in me. Mm -hmm. So those are some good things about Rick Spielman, but um, you know you still kind of hated it. <laughs> you wanted more yeah. information. I get and I guarantee you the media weren't all happy with it but as a as a fan i i honestly could care less but um in last year um before the season started when um he was doing si i think it was an si interview was it quasi Mensa was an si interview or sporting news i don't know where he's like ah, i was tempted to it's tough not to burn down the quarterback position and i'm like quasi needs to be not needs to not talk anymore for a while. You don't do that right before the season start. And, and I think he learned because you didn't hear a peep out of him the rest of the season. Yeah, he was grounded the rest of the year. Yeah, he said, I he like, said something like uh he said something funny. It was like, well, obviously, you know, Kirk's not Mahomes or oh yeah, he's not Mahomes or something like, or that. Something like or that. Joe Montana or something like that. Yeah, I'm like, which is you know, which well, I think mean, it's obvious he's with, he's but. not because he's a different different person, but yeah. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was just a kind of thing you don't usually hear out of the uh, out of the front office. So yeah, I think I think they nipped that in the bud. And we're like, hey, let's just wait till. Let's well, and then you have to go have out. a conversation with them the next day. I'm like, I didn't, you know, this is what I meant. I didn't mean this, you know. So yeah, it's not a big confidence booster. But he he actually went on um, in an interview. Um, let's see here. Uh, first and foremost, I want to appreciate how great a player he is. He's one of the best pure throwers in the league. I don't know that I'll be around another one as good as him. And uh, he stepped up in big moments critically when he needed it, made a lot of plays. We're trying to find a great solutions, solutions that fit our two-year, three-year team horizon uh, involving Kirk. Exactly what I've been saying. Two, three years. Because we it may go three, um, we thought it would go two. News is kind of saying it's not going to be two, um, but ultimately our goal is to put together a championship team. And if we think we can meet that threshold, you have to maybe look around, do something else. But we want Kirk to be a part of that. He's a great player. You know, he's not he's not pussyfooting around it uh, for sure. Um, now, the also said some things about some other players. Or dodge some questions about some other players. Um, do you f feel like we're bringing Dalvin uh, Dalvin Tomlinson back? I do. Um, I think that I think that he's actually gotten maybe a little bit more important um, with Flores coming over. You think about uh, it, it's it's a one gap defense now. It's it's a very like uh, they focus on penetrating fronts um, more so than your. Uh, like two gap nose tackle kind of guy at defensive tackle. Um, so I think in the same vein that a guy like Christian Wilkins has made a big impact in Miami. Um, I, th I think he's going to have a similar role um, with, with Dalvin in mind. And I think that, and I mentioned this <clears throat> on some other platforms as well, but I, I think that the, the Roy Robertson Harris extension that just came out of Jacksonville could serve as something of a model for Dalvin's. Um, he got, he got three years, 30 in new money. And I think that could be something similar to what we see out of the, the Dalvin extension. He's making 7.5 mil to the cap if he walks. Um, so if, if you take three years, let's say 30 in new money, three years, 37.8, you could get that cap hit. You could keep that cap hit, I should say, around there um, and retain a good player at, you know, pretty well market value. We'll see how high he comes in in that negotiation, um, just because I'm not sure how much higher they'd be willing to go, um, you know, because you're getting into at that point, like 
edge rusher money or like a Chris Jones defensive tackle kind of money where it's, you know, he's obviously not that caliber of player. So I think as long as he comes in pretty reasonable, 29, um, he's still got a few more good years left. I think, I think it, it, it should be a player they bring back, especially when you consider the dead cap that they would be able to, to spread out over the, the, the length of that extension um, and, and target this championship window that they, you know, seem to seem to think they have. Before I let Justin out of timeout, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, you know my, my my fear my my thing in the past with Thomason is I didn't realize that you know how that seven million dollars worked, that 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 cap hit only hits us if we release him, um, and it, otherwise it's spread out. So I mm-hmm. I've kind of peeled back the idea, of tr- but I still, honest to God, think letting him go and finding a replacement for him. Um, might be better because the potential draft compensation. If he does sign a contract like that, that's a. I think that's a third round pick contract that we might get out get out of him, and we also get a you know hopefully a comparable replacement. But I'm you know I thought Thompson had his best year with us. Um, if he stayed healthy the whole year, maybe he made a might have made a bigger impact. Uh, Justin, what's your take on that? First off, how's the sound here? Because I'm using my phone now. Apparently, my computer. It's not too bad. Computer. All right, fair enough. I'll talk about it. it. Well, good, yeah. um, I would bring Dalvin Thompson back at the right price, um, like what Johnny said. It's you have to think that both sides are still mutually interested because you don't go through the rigmarole of saying, "Hey, your contract voided, therefore you're gone." Let's extend that a few more weeks now. I don't know if you guys mentioned this because I came back halfway back in. The Vikings did give up their rights to franchise tag him. So there was benefits to both sides and a little give and take each way. To your point, again, seven and a half million of dead money would be reduced to two and a half plus whatever his new contract is. So you're already into him for seven and a half million. Now, you don't want to throw good money after bad. And there's a thing in business called sunk cost where Sometimes you just have to realize you have a sunk cost instead of trying to recuperate some of your sunk costs. But having said that, if you really look at the first half of the year when, you know, Hunter, Zedaria Smith, and Davin Tomlinson were all healthy, you know, prior to the Buffalo game before zadarius has got his knee contusion, and then prior to Dalvin missing a few games, again, there, there wasn't a whole lot to write home about from that defense last year. But for the first half or so, they were halfway decent anyway. Again, nowhere near purple people eaters. But – I would bring him back if you can get him on a reasonable deal. Now, again, you've got all the other salary cap machinations and all the other players that you're going to have to make decisions on. But I think he's a solid enough player. You're right. He's not, you know, a game wrecker like a Chris Jones or the Lawrence guy from uh, uh, the Giants. But I'd be willing to take him back if they can get him at the right price. And what that is, I don't know. But I definitely would still be happy to see him back on this team, to have some sort of continuity on that defensive line. Yeah, I think it's an important role that he fits. Um, and unless you can get a player with a comparable skill set that's an upgrade or younger or something like that, um, I, I don't really see any reason to move off of him as long as you can come to some sort of middle ground. And you got to think they they feel like they have a shot at that, pushing the void date back to the, to the 15th of March. Yeah, I think uh, because uh, you know, giving up the I guess the right to uh, franchise him, um, I don't know if it, we would want to pay that money anyways. I don't know what, although D tackle might be a little less money than an edge rusher. Um, yeah, I don't. And then yeah, the cap hit thing. So I'm I'm not sure. Um, I think that was a just a smart move either way. It gives us a little more time to think about it. And yeah. but it does look real positive that way. Now he brought up also or Dalvin Cook is also brought up and he answered that with cap <laughs> with uh, a reference to the cap. Yeah. Uh, and I know some YouTubers out there are saying he's gone. Um, ex- after he said that, um, a lot of people thought that anyways, but where do you feel like Dalvin Cook is right now? I know he's a fan favorite for a lot. And before we go on, um, before we go on, sorry, the chat was freezing up on me too. I don't know if I'm freezing up on the other end. I'm checking it out. I, I think we might be having some problems. But Bandito, thanks. Um, I really like Mary. She's awesome. Mary I, I totally agree best. with you, Mary. Uh, good, my brothers. All right, Michael Miller. All right. Uh, those two are breath of fresh air. <laughs> I Thank you. 
Thank Appreciate you. you, Mary. We really need almost a whole defense. I wonder if we'll sign a DH for a five-year contract or possibly trade him. We sign a DH. Daniel Hunter, I think. Hunter. Oh, Daniel Hunter. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's ain't baseball. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm a big baseball fan, so it's like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, Bendito, this uh, – all right. Um, from the media room in Minnesota Sports Talk Studios. Yep. Uh, I think these – yeah. All right. Skull hey, Mafia. Try- hey, no, Skull Mafia up, came Mafia? at me today. All because I questioned um, – I think it was Mackey – um, did a did a tweet about he was surprised he's still shocked by how many how many uh, Viking fans are I uh, think it's more important for Kirk Cousins to get his forty million dollars bag than you know be, than be fans of the team basically and I'm like I, and I I retweeted and I says why make stuff up like this why make stuff up like this and nobody in the comments was defending about how. They wanted Kirk to get his money and nothing else, right? So I just think it was a straw man argument. And uh, uh, Skull Mafia came at me. I offered him to come on the show. He still he still got the uh, stage fright. He says doesn't want to come on. But anytime, Skull Mafia, come talk to me. Come defend what you had to say about me because I don't know you're making stuff up about me. I I was not doing anything other than why call out fans like that, you know. Half your fans are, you know, are, uh, you know, they, they don't think like that. I don't think anybody thinks like that. And that's why I called out a, a Phil Mackey today. Well, but, I know. Uh, I think yeah. we know a few people that do, but da- uh, Dalvin, it's, a, uh, so, it's, a, it's, a, it's a minority. So Dalvin Cook, uh, we're looking at, you know, and the keyword is Vikings fan, too. We're not talking about Joe Sonosa. Vikings fan. Well, I wasn't talking about him. <laughs> so there's two I know now, but anyway. All right. But uh, yeah, so we're, you know, Dalvin Cook, um, what what are you thinking, Justin? You think he's? I think I cut you off. No, uh, I think he's gone. Uh, I don't think that there's much of a chance that he's back. Uh, I didn't think that before his agent went out and kind of threw a little shade at the play calling. Um, I didn't think it before he had his surgery. I certainly don't think it now. And it's not that we think that Dalvin Cook is trash. It's just hey, it is what it is. You've got. What's up, McAndrews? You've got a lot of salary cap moving to do. And I'm sorry, you just don't pay a running back that kind of money. You know, if you can if you can swing a trade for him because a team doesn't want to dive into the market and just wants a guy that they know that they can get without having negotiating with, you take it. I mean, you get a bag of footballs at this point, you take it because you're pretty much going to end up cutting this guy, I, I think. I, I don't see any way that he's back. And again, it's nothing personal. It's not that I don't want to see him back. If he were going to take a reduced number, I'd take him back. But he's under no obligation. Just like no no player is under any obligation to take less money. And I'm just going to say it like, let's just get that out the way right now. But it, business is business. And that's the fun part of the end of February, first part of March is the combine starts and people start talking and business decisions have to be made. And I'm sorry, but Delvin Cook, I think, is just going to have to be one of those guys. Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, and, and something about... Dalvin to the way his contract is structured, it would be an extremely easy out after this season. Um, but I think, I, I, I don't think that's something they're willing to wait on. What I mean by that is, is there almost his entire 2024 cap number comes off the books um, with, with him being cut this season. Um, right now we're, we're stuck with some guaranteed money um, that that's tied to him this year. I want to say it's almost a nine mil dead cap hit. Um, if we do cut him, clear is almost six. Um, and there are some weird things around that contract that I may have wrong. Um, there's a, another two million that guarantees at on like the 17th or, or something weird like that. But the, was the that the injury? Might... That was the injury thing. Yeah, okay. you're right. Okay. Yeah, they um, talked about that you know a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So there's some goofy shit with his contract. Obviously. Like he, if he but, doesn't pass as a physical, he gets a guaranteed. It's an injury guarantee. $2 yeah. Dollars. Exactly. So he waited on his surgery just so he wouldn't. Most likely, I mean, honestly, that's got to be what it was. Yeah. Why would you wait? You know, if you're wanting to get back by the regular season, no, because you'll get two years more, two million more guaranteed if you're hurt. Yep. So. He's 28. There's no reason to restructure his deal. Um, and I think you just, I think you just eat the the dead cap hit this season. He's not been good. Um, 
he's been sort of productive, uh, but he was 44th in yards per carry over expected. Uh, he has butter hands suddenly. Um, and, and he just doesn't quite have the, the burst that he used to, um, you know, his, he, he's not able to jump cut and reaccelerate the way he used to. Um, we saw him break a few big ones this year, but you know, like the screen was obviously a, a, a crazy play against, um, mm-hmm. in the Buffalo game. And that was, that was awesome. He had the big, uh, you know, 84 yard run or whatever that was in the, uh, uh, I can't remember what game that was either, but he had some big plays, but he's also, I mean, maybe we're spoiled watching AP for, for so long, but how often does Dalvin just get caught from behind on, on when he has some open field, like more, more so than he used to as well. Um, for me, for me, it wasn't necessarily caught from behind. It was more like he, he kind of went down a little easier this year to me. Yeah, that's that too. That was it's, my thought process behind it. Yeah. You see it with the eye test. There's a lot of advanced metrics that, that, uh, echo that. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't see really any scenario where Dalvin's back. Um, and I don't think he's particularly tradable. looks like a cut to me. The only way I see he's tradable is the people don't see the, you know, they just don't see much with the draft. We, it's maybe, maybe he's a guy we hold on, but then we're holding up, we're taking up cap space when we could be going after free agents. So for us, we got to make a decision right away. I think, um, you're right. You know, 6 million this year, um, three million next year. Um, if we cut them ne- next year, there was a scenario early on where I thought, "Hey, um, we could, you know, get him to sign a, a, a one-year contract that's, you know, his guaranteed money would be better than what he would probably get if we if we went somewhere else." But I still think, you know, all you need is two teams to bid on somebody, or one team to like him, or two teams to bid on him. Um, and uh, there are some teams out there that need, don't have a go-to running back, and he did show burst, and he, you know, and there were times where he took over a game for us. So he still has that puncher's chance in him. Uh, who knows what a fresh off season will do? Maybe fixing that shoulder finally. Who knows? But uh, my my bet, I'm leaning more that he's gone myself too. Yeah, and he's a little marginalized in the O'Connell scheme too. Oh, that too. Absolutely. If we're not going to use him, if we're not going to use a fourteen million dollar running back properly, then yeah, let's get rid of him and misuse the cheaper guys. <laughs> is what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah, and like CJ Ham's the same thing. He played only fourteen percent of offensive snaps, um, and and even if Cook is running effectively, still a lot of Kevin o- of what o- Kevin O'Connell wants to do is set up the pass with the pass. Uh, use that short game and quick game um, and and open up the the deep passing that way. So, I don't know. I, I, I feel like they're – I mean, it, more so, I think, than even across the league. I think in this kind of offense, running back is, is just so replaceable. Um, and you can get replacement-level guys anywhere, and you might have one on the roster in, in, a, in Ty Chandler. Um, Music to my ears. That would be Thank worth a read depending on uh depending on what his number looks like i know i know cook and madison are close um and madison could get some big money as an rb1 somewhere um but you know i i wouldn't mind him back on a on a decent number and and Wait, you know let him kind of chandler out of that rookie card oh I'm nice betting on him. i'm betting on him yeah no i think he's really no i'm not giving that away damn it he looked amazing <laughs> no, in preseason no. <laughs> He no, that is a, music to his ears, indeed. Uh, talking I think about he had the Chandler. most yards after contact in the preseason. I, if the you start talking, and then you start talking about Jalen Naylor, I'm like, I'm gonna pass say, out. You know, I, 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 I swear, you talk about those two guys in the same breath. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just kidding, I'm just kidding. How's my video now? Am I still on Frozen, or am I am I good now? No, this you're is looking good, good yeah. to me. I'm looking at a feed, and I look fuzzy, man. I don't look good at all. All right. Um, but anyways, I need a better camera, so that's half the problem. Kendrick's Hicks gone, linebacker on this team, biggest need defense. Agreed. By the way, drop shot Jake. Thanks for jumping in here. Hey, you know what? I don't see a whole lot of likes on the video right now. Yeah, and come there's on, yo. A good amount of people in this chat. Do me a favor, take a moment, go click on that. Uh, why take time? Uh daily skull on what was the format? Uh, we're on Spotify. Spotify. Yep. Daily Skull on Spotify, Purple and Gold for Days. Go make sure you're subscribed to him. 
and I'm Minnesota Sports Talk. So if you're watching this for the first time, I appreciate it. Subscribe, like, and comment. That's how we Hulk smash the YouTube algorithm. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, agreed linebacker in the draft. There is uh, Speaking of linebackers in the draft, there's this guy that's making waves, and I think uh, I think everybody kind of likes him. Let me bring him up here. Um, I think it's uh, Trenton Simpson, and I got another one here. Do, have you guys got a chance to look at this guy? People are comparing him to Asamoa, but t- uh, but taller and probably more athletic. Not a ton, personally. Um, I've heard a little bit more recently. Um, that he might be sliding down some boards a little bit. Um, but, but I think he's still in that linebacker one conversation. Um, I like, yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's talking about that. And yeah. then this uh six, five monster that transferred from Alabama to Arkansas. I don't know if you got, you guys got a chance at, at him. He's like a little bit undersized Brian Urlacher in my opinion, um, yeah. but faster. So that's the advantage of him being a little bit lighter. But if you guys get a chance to look at this guy, I I think a Viking fans would fall in love with a linebacker like this. I actually, I, I actually lean a little bit more towards Sanders, but then again, you know, I'm not the draft expert. Um, but having said that, I will take either one of those two guys because as was stated, it's hard to know if how – desperate our secondary or how depleted our secondary is when you have absolutely no pass rush, but it is real easy to know that our linebacking core uh, was just straight, not adequate last year. Let's just say it like that. I'm trying to be nice here. Now, obviously, again, hopefully we get to see a lot of uh, awesome Moa. I don't see how he's not one of the starting linebackers and I would absolutely love to see a second young player. So you've got, you know, two linebackers back to back, um, back-to-back drafts to say, all right, these are going to be the stalwarts of this uh, linebacking core for the next two years. Slightly more on the Sanders guy, but again, I will be happy with either one of those two players, and I wouldn't be upset if we took him in the first round. Justin, apparently made some sense last night. Mary wants to say thank you. Uh, I agree. <laughs> Ty Chandler is fast as F, boy. He, he runs a 4-3-40, okay, and he plays running back. We didn't, have we had that? You know, Dalvin Cook probably, I think he was close. But uh, this guy's like, a, was, ran a 4 3 6 in college. So um, Cook is playing consistent football. He's not playing consistent football. Um, Cook trips over his feet more than any running back in history. Mm-hmm. I do, I mean, that's from come from, I think what you're saying, like I'm saying, it comes down, he uh, get, was going down really, um, really fast, in my opinion. And here's a question uh, Could we get a fourth for Cook? And Dalvin. this is where my viewpoint is. Yeah, if we had two teams that needed a running back and really liked him and were, um, and were um, you know, going back and forth, I think it could go as high as third, but you would need that perfect storm of two teams really both liking Cook and having the cap room. But, I would say highly unlikely unless you get that perfect storm. I mean, Yeah, I'm talking that. perfect storm. I mean, again, if you're a team that is – Okay, I'm gonna. The surgery has now thrown that off. I thought well, that was that more too. likely until the surgery. That too, but for example, Leonard Fournette got released today from Tampa Bay. If you're a team that really wants to get a running back to solidify your offense, you're that one key piece away. If you could just sign Leonard Fournette off the street or give up a third or a fourth for Dalvin Cook, which way are you going? How heavy did he show up to camp last time, man? I don't know. I don't think Fournette is he going to get the time of day. I think he'll get the time. I'm not saying he's going to break the bank. He's not going to get like a, you know. Oh, yeah, it'd be cheap. He's going to be dirt cheap. But, again, you're not having to trade for a, a draft pick for Dalvin. You're not going – and if you do trade for him, you got to pick up Dalvin's salary unless you can renegotiate it. So, if we could get a third-round pick, <laughs> I'll do somersaults. We could get a fourth-round pick, I'll be happy. I, I doubt it. But to your point, if, you know, the running back market w- uh, dries up before the draft and, you know, a bunch of the free agents get signed – and a team or two got left out of the dance, out of the musical chairs, and you can pit them off each other. Sure, I suppose it's possible. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath that we're going to get much for him, though. I mean, John, and Skull Mafia you? agrees with me about Ty Chandler, so I'm going to, you know, snip this little segment and <laughs> put in the archives that Skull Mafia agreed with me on something. I appreciate it. <laughs> 
Where's two evil to hope, man? Where, where's I know, me when he, I need him, right? Yeah, I was about to say he showed up. He didn't show up for my show last night. I was waiting for him. Uh, <laughs> two evil to hope. It likes to stir the pot. You know, he wants me to give away. I think my he show. showed up when John was on uh, our uh, my other show, or I, I think he showed up both times. I call him my nemesis, my YouTube nemesis. Yeah, I asked him if he likes anything. <laughs> so you do remember him. It's <laughs> yeah, hard to forget, you know. And yeah, he, yeah, yeah. oh, we totally he's got. Uh, Jalen Ramsey. Everybody's like on this uh, train of trading for Jalen Ramsey. What so are they that. thinking? Tell us. Go ahead, John. You tell me what you think. What are they thinking about that? Less twenty eight, right? The, He's twenty years old. Yeah, less bonkers than the Xavier Howard talk. I think from a, yeah, probably. from a Vikings point of view. Um, and obviously, there's the. Uh, the rumors and the requests out there and the um, and those are kind of swirling around, but like, and, and a lot's been made. The Rams played the most zone in the league last season. The least, the Vikings played the second least man. The Rams played the least man last season. Um, so, so a lot of, and, and it's not like Jalen Ramsey can't thrive in, in either scheme. He's, he's obviously one of the, one of the most gifted corners in the league, but it's, it's going to be, you know, he was in a, a very similar scheme to what we ran last season, uh, more similar, similar to that than, than the Flores scheme. Um, he's been, ever since he got to the Rams, he's been in Fangio style defenses. What I like about Ramsey is how fluidly he can play inside or outside, how good of a tackler he is. I think if he comes to Minnesota, we make that happen. However, that goes, um, he's owed 17 million this year. The team who trades for him will pay that. We could make the room. It, it's it, it's not impossible. And if he if he were to join this group, um, I think it would be an awesome fit. Not that he wouldn't. Not that there's any team he wouldn't fit with. Mm. You know, let's make that clear. I'm not I'm not uh, breaking any new ground here. But I think <laughs> he would be an awesome awesome slot cornerback um, for us, especially helping with the run fit. Um, and then obviously when there is that big time X receiver, um, you can you can throw Jalen Ramsey on him and maybe look the other way a little bit. Um there's no I wanted to point out something here. Jim NFL seven. I don't know if we can be friends. I <laughs> I mean, there is nothing I like more than the NFL draft. And with spring training, NFL draft, um, my my family, not necessarily in that order. I'm not saying it's th- my family's third, but those are the two things I, I like more than Christmas is uh, spring training and the NFL draft. But I the NFL draft happens in April, so spring training's over. So <laughs> there's nothing that'll keep me from that NFL draft. Uh and the and your and your name is Jim NFL seven. I think so I wouldn't I wouldn't make it. that I wouldn't make that I'm just giving you crap, man. Thanks for mm. showing up as usual. That's great. <laughs> You've been on my uh, show a few times now. But Flores being here now, I believe Kendrick's is staying and Hicks is gone. And draft a linebacker. I, I kind of agree with this statement. What do you guys think? That's well, actually exactly yeah. what I think as well. Go ahead, though, Justin. No, I, I said as soon as the day after Flores was hired, I said prior to this hire, I thought Eric Hendricks had about a 5% chance of coming back. One, because he's got the most salary that can be gained by cutting, and he's got the least amount of dead money that could be yeah. incurred by cutting. So, with Flores, though, I could see some logic of saying, well, if we can get you back at let's meet you halfway on your salary and let's let's find a way to keep you here. I could see about it being now about a 25 percent chance because and, and I said uh, this the other day, Eric Hendricks had the added responsibility of having the uh, defensive calls coming into his helmet that Anthony Bard had for for up until that point. So maybe it was him losing a step. Maybe it was him having some additional responsibilities where he's got to worry about where everybody else is lining up and getting those sort of signals called and that sort of thing. I'm not saying that it went from no chance to better than 50-50, but I could see, I agree with the scenario that says that Flores might come in and say, you know what, I can get more out of this guy um, than than Donna Shell did. Now, again, it's got to still be at a reduced number. I, with all due respect, Eric Hendricks is a, a Vikings Ring of Honor player, but I, I can't bring Eric Hendricks back regardless for his contract numbers uh, at the moment there. So that's I definitely agree with the sentiment that the odds went from about 5% to 25% in my mind. Yeah, I agree. And I like – so I, I like getting a, a, a rookie linebacker into the mix as well. I like uh, Deion Henley a lot. Um 
in addition to to Sanders and and Simpson. Um, but I think I think with that group, if you want a a finished product in the linebacker room, um, I think you I think you maintain that veteran presence to go with these new guys we bring in. And he, he looks really it looks like a really juicy cut on the cap sheet, uh, like like you mentioned. Um, but I think there's a, we could see something similar to what the Eagles did with Fletcher Cox last off season. I don't know yeah. if you remember them cutting him and re-signing him immediately. That was, mm-hmm. you know, a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We don't feel like we can pay you that much, but stay here. Um, and that was the last year of his deal. So maybe, maybe it's something similar and maybe we've got that rapport. Um, but I also think that's something that could make sense for both sides is an, is actually an extension. Um, because I don't think that he's quite, and, you know, again, I don't think it's super likely. I don't think it's necessarily the best course of action long term, but I think that could be something like two years, 16 mil new money. Mm-hmm. We, could look, we could look at the, the three years that that leaves us with. All three years, the cap hit could be lower than it is right now. Um, and you could, you could lower it by a few million this season. In 2024 and 2025, it would also be lower than that. Very easy out after 24 something like this probably pushes a lot of guarantees into 2024. Um, but just like you mentioned, I think that Flores will be able, be able to get a lot more out of him than, than Ed Donatel was. I mean, Kendricks ran about 10 miles a game just because that second level of defense was hung out to dry. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Ed called things and, and funneled things to the middle when, when there wasn't, there weren't the bodies and there wasn't the athleticism laterally. Um, but yeah, I can not. see him in something of like a Kyle Van Noy role. Um, where maybe he's not that that trigger blitzing backer, um, but but maybe he's maybe he's tracking the running back more often than he's got zone eyes and, and having to cover so much ground. Um, maybe he's moving a little bit more downhill than he is backpedaling. And I think you know, especially if you get some more depth in that room, um, think about if if Brian Osamo was playing the same amount of snaps at the end <laughs> at the beginning of the season that he was at the end, and how that might have helped the the aging linebackers. You know, I could see a reduced snap count for Kendricks and still have him bringing that that leadership uh, to the table. And maybe he maybe he's out on on some uh, on some passing downs. You know, maybe maybe we go to the the youth and the athleticism. Um, maybe we go to some really like some big dime stuff and get more safeties on the field than line. Right. Um, yeah, that's definitely- something we didn't have a whole lot of was any rotation, especially most of the se- you know, most of the season. We started to see more of it starting in the Miami game, and then there was a nice little run there. Osmo started seeing some more time. But, yeah, there was like – they were playing like 13 players the whole game on defense. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. That that means Madison RB with Cook gone. The only way that happens, if we like release Cook right away and we start negotiating with Madison, and even then I think it's kind of a stretch. Um, yeah, Skull Mafia, you do agree with me a lot. I was just kidding. Uh, don't believe anything I say. Um, just, just on Kirk long-term, it depends on what you consider long-term, um, find new NFL. Oh yeah. He's still advertising. We get it. Jim NFL seven. We want to see <laughs> your videos. Uh, we're thinking about brawling. I don't know what Ben Dino's talking about. I love cook, have his Jersey, got to see him and other running backs warm up in front of us at training camp at time to yeah. go. Mary Fisk is hardcore. She's yeah, getting she rid of him. Yeah. She, she loves him. Time to go. Seven old far of Adrian Peterson jersey. They're Hall of Fame, and no players worthy of that for current Vikings. Um, hmm. I think there's more than that. Well, I think there's some players capable of it, but they're probably too young to consider it. Right. Oh, Harrison Smith. I know Harrison, Justin maybe. is kind of you know borderline on him, but you put him against um, the Steelers' uh, safety. Is he's, he's got more stats than him. I just said. He just was flashier and on had hair commercials. Uh, it's colder mark than expected. Then get him in purple. Uh, I love March and April. Nice. Me too, Skull. We agree <laughs> on that too. No nod into uh, spring training just for season starts. Um, Overshone is a. Oh yeah, I was wondering what you're talking about. Overshone is a dog watch that tape linebacker from Texas A&M. I'll, I'll look him up, man. Uh, okay. Thanks for the insight. I'll um, I'll, I'll I'll see if I can do a video on him. Crazy yeah, build, Jim. I saying. agree. What do you What do you think? Tell Justin that the uh, Harrison Smith is a Hall of Famer. Unequivocally, um, unequivocally. 
All right. Why, no why, why are you throwing me under the bus? I, I, you, know, I, I said you're on the fence with that. No, I'm talking about Dave. I, you're on the fence with that, man. You're on the fence. I, I'm like, I, I, rem- it rem- I remembered it, and I, I just spout out without thinking. Okay. I say that Harrison Smith is definitely Ring of Honor and is definitely Hollow Very Good, and that he just needs Hollow probably. <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that's what, okay, Kevin that's Williams. That's a backhanded compliment. No, Kevin Williams is Hall of Very Good, but he's not Hall of Fame. We love him, but he's not Hall of Fame. He's Hall of Very Good. Harrison Smith is definitely Hall of Very Good and probably will be Hall of Fame. I just, can, I just say that he's not quite there yet, and some of it, as you have said, isn't entirely on him because he doesn't get the the media camaraderie or the, the media uh, attention that somebody like uh, Ed Reed or Tro Palomalo did. I've never said, oh, he's oh, he's not a Hall of Famer. I, don't, I didn't say. I it said like you that. said it was borderline. I didn't say yeah. you said he wasn't. I, I he needs one or two more years of yeah. There you go. Hey, if I had known you were going to win, it was your just hair, in the Pro Bowl in twenty twenty one. I would wear my hair if I had known, uh, boss. I really would have. I, I compared his stats to Palomalo, and it's if he may, if he was first ballot, I think he was first ballot, wasn't he, Palomalo? If he was first ballot, uh, Harrison Smith is. I don't know, man. It's not necessarily first ballot because they like to screw Vikings and let them go senile or damn near die before they let him in. And by but, the way, I'm factoring that into my discussion about will he actually make it is, is that, you know, this is what happens. You have to be, not in there. Chris Carter didn't even get in first ballot. He had to wait three years. I mean, yeah, it's some, it's some serious. Bo- so, um, Jared Allen, come on, man. It. Oh, yeah. geez, come on, man. I bet they met let Peterson wait. Can I circle back uh, to our guest about something he said when you brought up Jalen, his uh, the Jalen Ramsey bit? What did you mean by not as crazy as the Xavier and Howard? So what did you mean by that? Oh, John. Well, we talked about. Um, I think it was with you guys. Was it, it was with, probably him and Casey and Jalen? Was it with Gigi? Guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, we talked about because that was like a random uh, rumor. I think it was right when the floor is higher. Happened. Right. Uh, yeah. Xavier Howard commented on like the Instagram announcement or something with like a fire emoji and. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that sparked some some people saying, you know, the, the Xavier Howard trade. I think it's mostly bonkers for for math reasons. Um, he's still guaranteed a, a shitload of money on that contract. He's signed through 2026 in Miami, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and they only they would they would take on something astronomical for a dead cap hit to move on from him. Um, so that would really have to be like a sunk cost scenario where they feel like they need to move on. Uh, from from Xavier and Howard as as much as they can, and there are some things out right now about uh, Byron Jones, um, who might be retiring. He's he's said some interesting things on social media to that effect, um, and and he's the boundary corner opposite Xavier and Howard. So I think it, it's increasingly less likely um, for for him to move at all and to come here. I, I think that the prompt was actually like Dalvin for Xavier and Howard, yes, and, and something yes. like that, yeah. Um, you know, but but even if it was just like picks and whomever else, like I, I just don't see it making sense for either side, um, it, it, especially when he's a little bit. Not that he was he was he was in that that same tier, maybe with Ramsey for a year or two. Mm-hmm. Um, great ball skills, but but he may be a little bit more over the hill than a guy like Ramsey as well. Um, well, I'll say this. It was a pipe dream and it was the hey, you know, the Miami Dolphins don't have any running backs under contract and Dalvin's from Miami. So why not? So, yes, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. I, you know, I did yeah, one of my Miami. five minute shorts on that. But to, just to clarify, his cap numbers, if he is traded, would not be that bad for the Vikings because a lot of his cap hits well, for the there. Vikings. No. Right. It, you're right. They would have to take on if it was pre June 1st, some ridiculous amount of, of dead cap. hits. so you're right. It would have yeah, to yeah. be you know, some sort of convincing Miami to take that some cost if they're just saying, hey, we want to get rid of him. For the Vikings, it would actually not be all that outstanding. It would actually be outstanding. He's only got $1.1 million of base salary next year. And while his, his contract does go up to $15 million for the next three years, the only portions of that that are guaranteed are $3 million roster bonuses each year. So you would be, in effect, going year to year on that guy. You could cut him at any time without any. Yes, it is quite slanted to where this would be perfect for the Vikings and it would take – a little convincing of Miami to do, but I wasn't sure mm-hmm. if you were saying it from the that standpoint, or if you were saying oh. it from the player standpoint. You didn't think he might be worth it, or that that's why. I was yeah. asking. Okay. No, from a fit standpoint, I mean, he would he would transfer over very very well, very seamlessly. Um, you know, he's used to he's used to being on an island out there, and and used to 
um, playing that off man behind those those crazy blitz packages that Flores puts together. So it'd be awesome from a from an X's and O's point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I just feel it's it's a pipe dream. Unlikely. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, just to um, finish off with real quick, Dave, just to finish off okay. what we were talking about with Jalen Ramsey. So as far as Ramsey goes, are you in on him? You out on him? Are you in on him for the right price? Or you did what are your thoughts there? I mean, my I thoughts just, are I would take the guy, but I'm not giving up my first round pick. There's no discussion on that. I know rap is just like, hey, let's just give up our first or Jalen Ramsey. No, no, no. I'd give up my third or maybe a second next year. But what are your thoughts? Where's your threshold on it? I think our more bigger priority is interior defensive line and center. I just I I don't think we get better. I think cornerback's we get, priority we'll number get one. Better, but we don't get that much better unless we fix that interior pass rush, and maybe we maybe we fix it by just getting a new uh, coach. So you know, it. hey, that might. I'm not against it, but you're right. I'm not trading first round pick for hey, him, although yeah. he's potentially worth it. Yeah, uh, he didn't play all that great this past year. I heard some really bad things about his you know stats. You know that other people dived into. I didn't, um, but I didn't even watch a game he played. So I couldn't really tell you. I only can go off what other people say, and that does not scream first round pick to me. Um, but then we're taking on what, how many, how many million? Um, I want to say 17, 20, Yeah. I mean, holy crap. Yep. Um, <laughs> and that's, then that's 2023 hit. And that's not, that's not real malleable. That's, the, that's the exact opposite of what we're trying to do, I think, right? It's yeah. not um, malleable without an extension. But I, I don't know that it is because this might be a pretty all-in kind of offseason. If we got the other Ram, Aaron Donald, well, you know, yeah. I would be like, F yeah, <laughs> let's get him. But I, I think um, – I don't know that I have a hard line. Um, I don't like – I don't like the first pick, uh, especially uh, the first round pick, one for one. Um, I wouldn't mind taking Jalen Ramsey at 23, but you got to think about his cap hit coming over as well. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's something like we've got to give our first up to get Ramsey back, but we get some mid round picks back with him, maybe. Um, but you know, as, as far as a, like in or out, I'd be in on it. Um, I think, I think cornerbacks are number one need, uh, especially, you know, not only from a, uh, like a per capita, (laughs) point of view because I think there's three on the roster currently. Mm-hmm. Um, I like bringing Shelly back. P2 is probably gone given the scheme change. Agreed. Um, so we need bodies and we need we also need competent ones. The bodies we have, we don't really know what we're going to get from them. Um, let, let me let me count them. We got Dantzler. Um, we got Dantzler, Booth, Evans. 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 And uh, we got uh, Booth. special teamer. What's his name? Troy Dye? No, not Troy Dye. Um, Boyd's, Boyd's a free Boyd. Boyd. Thank you. It's, oh, he's it's free agent. That's right. Good point. He's free agent. Booth, okay, booth, so who's the third? And uh, Dantzler. Oh, Dab yeah, Booth. Yeah. Um. So we we don't oh, know. That's three. Um, oh, yeah, that is kind of light. Yeah, is Dantzler going to take that next It step. makes sense that we're bringing Shelly back, and I don't think he's that pricey, yeah. right? No, we've got to bring Duke uh, Shelly back. Right. So that's four. We need, you know, we need at least two more. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been and doing videos on a couple. Yeah, uh, I mean, but let, let me hit, let's hit this point four. And we'll I'm bring up a couple of rookies in the draft, or a couple of potential draft picks, and we can talk more about corners. Uh, outside of him only playing like 16 games outside of high school, um, Trey Lance. Uh, I don't know if even San Francisco can afford to get rid of him, considering you know, you know they're they're you know the other two quarterbacks. One I think is gone, and Purdy has got Tommy John surgery, right? So, can they afford to get rid of Trey Lance now? Marshall, Minnesota native. Well, it depends on if they're trading and getting something or another quarterback back. And oh, you're good. you're saying if we traded Kirk Cousins for? Trey well, Lance. I don't know if Michael was suggesting that or not. So, uh, if yeah. was, would you trade for Trey Lance just to be Kirk Cousins' backup? I don't know. The San Francisco probably would definitely not. Well, do because that. The, the timing doesn't fit, right? If we sign him, we sign Kirk Cousins an extension, which it sounds like we are trying to do. Him as our backup don't make sense. So it probably only thing that makes sense for them is if they're getting Kirk a healthy quarterback in return to at least start the season and Purdy sit behind Cousins for whatever contract he signs with Sam Fran. Um, that only that's the only way that would make sense, right? 
if Cousins goes to them and we get and we go to Trey Lance and we piss this season away. That's what the people <laughs> want. It's not about wanting, it's about accepting. I think there's a difference. Well, I mean, well, and also are we doing that? It doesn't look like we're doing that. I think no, uh, we, I you know we uh, got the defensive coordinator, you know. Yeah, no. I the, the the ghost has been given up on that for me. I'm just saying that to answer the 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 commenter's question, I think it was Michael, would I do it? Yeah, I would. Will the Wills do that? No. Will the Vikings in general do that? No. Um, so if you're talking about trading cousins for Lance and some other pieces and just, you know, starting the uh, rebuild portion of the competitive rebuild, you can dial down the competitive portion to about 10% and the rebuild portion up to about 90% at that point, which some would have a reasonable argument that that might long-term be a better strategy. But to to answer the question, if it's just trading uh, Lance for a backup quarterback, no, I probably wouldn't do that. And I can guarantee San Francisco wouldn't do that. So I don't know the context, Mike, of which way you were asking, but so there's your answers Be- both ways. Before we talk cornerbacks again, my worthless opinion, isn't it harder for defense player to get Hall of Fame without a ring? Yes. 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 Because uh, Scott Studwell, Joey Browner, Jared Allen, probably a couple other guys um, in Minnesota, Purple. Jim Marshall. Jim Marshall's, Jim Marshall's still, still not getting let in. There's so many, even offensive players, it's hard to get in without a ring. Right. Um, you have to be super elite to do that on both sides of the ball. But I think especially defenses, like the Vikings had one of the greatest defenses several times over, over, you know, the decades. And yeah, they're not getting, not getting shots. Um, sorry for the bumpy ride mama, but it's smooth landing. Chris Carter. I don't know. Yes. What that no, I think to his point, I mean, think about this, Chris Carter and Terrell Owens, who are two of the top five receivers of all time, in my opinion, did not get in first ballot. Yeah. So, that tells you that even an offensive player, and I, I get it, wide receivers are tough not to crack sometimes, but we're talking about Chris Carter and Terrell Owens here, for crying out loud. So, no, to your point, absolutely. Defense is most definitely harder to get in. I am, I, I'm frankly surprised that John Randall got in as quick as he did. I shouldn't be surprised. It shouldn't be a, wow, John Randall got in as quick as he did. But I am surprised by it because defensive players – you know, unless you unless you've got sacks and interceptions, what are the defensive stats? How long did there? Dolan have to wait? He was one of the Too top long. five sack guys, right? When he went in. Uh, um Gibbs from Alabama, away. perfect replacement for Cook. Book it. All right, He's we gotta vote for him. Valid point, Dave. I don't remember the point I was giving, but uh I, I think I, I, I'm <laughs> sure it was valid because it's coming for me. This is my show and you're watching it, so that's all I need to know. Our show, Ramsey has to has played smart. No first or second. Don't think it will happen. Yeah, concerns about Lance. Uh, yeah, like is he any good? That's my, <laughs> that is a big concern. I think that that there was uh with Trey Lance, the book was out on him. Like, hey, he's a project. He's and there it hasn't changed, right? So it's like it's still the same situation. It's just they traded a lot of picks to go get him, right? Right. Like he's uncensored. What's We're gonna up, go on his show up, on right Thursday. Up. Yeah, we are. Um, so check that out. Uh Justin and me. Uh I don't know what's I think I'm gonna get I think I'm gonna get cornered by these guys. We'll find out if it's uh uh curb stomp 2.0. Uh the fact that Marshall is in the Hall of Fame is one of the greatest tragedies in NFL history. Agreed. You, you think it's for running backwards or what? You think, uh, it's, you think it's the wrong, wrong way? The wrong yeah. end zone I thing? think another part of it too is that he had two Hall of Famers on the line with him, and so some people are going to say, "Well, yeah, you should have done as well as you did when you have uh, Eller and Page are on the same line as you." You know what's okay. crazy about Page is he did as a defensive tackle. Yes, I put him as my number one guy on the. Uh, last year, my number one guy in the Mount Rushmore Hall of Fame of, uh, for uh, Vikings, the top four, because he did as a D tackle, and they went back and did his stats, and he had like 180 some sacks. Yeah, no, uh, Jim Marshall. When your record stands until Brett Favre breaks your consecutive game streak plays, oh yeah, as, too. Uh, from a quarterback, from a you know defensive lineman. Okay. You don't play that many games and not be a Hall of Famer and have the kind of stats that he did. But we could talk all night about Vikings that are that should be in the Hall of Fame and 
you know, we could just do a show in and of itself for that. Uh, what's up, David? Nice. Thanks for joining us. And yes, if you don't already subscribe to Vikings Uncensored, uh, one, why the heck not? But two, yes, uh, we're going to be on uh, with him. The show actually airs Friday at six. They do a pre-record. We're recording that on Thursday. But yes, uh, please tap in on Friday at six o'clock Central Time. Oh, Vikings sorry. Uncensored. I forgot he's not live. My bad. Uh, so he, does we'll do a pre- he does do premiere, though, so he does still yeah. interact. My my bad. Yeah, he he premieres it so you can you can chat with them. I forgot about that. My bad. Um Friday at six. Okay, you did say that. All right. Sorry about that, man. I keep forgetting. Uh is Adrian Peterson yet? Yeah, I if he's not a first ballot, I don't well, know who would be. He's a top don't five. Don't you have to be retired for five years though? Has he been retired yeah, for five years? He was just he was just in the NFL. He was on the yeah. Titans last year for a yeah. I, yeah, I mean yeah. I'm talking about oh, is he oh, in yeah. yet? No, he not yet. He's got to wait uh, four more years, I think. But yeah, yeah, he wasn't out. He was, he was out. This was his first year out, right? Yes, twenty twenty two. Because I remember him signing autographs right before the season on the Mall America. Um, Marshall was an Iron Man. True, we just got to then talk about. And of course, we got to stop and pay homage to Mary Fisk. Grant called Marshall one of the greatest players and leaders. There you have it. I can't wait until we get our franchise QB. All the numbers Kirk put up for nothing. If you can't do it in the playoffs uh there was a, a there was a a desmond ritter uh question i was really high on him i had him as qb1 come out of the draft what did you guys think of him most nfl ready guy coming out of that class i thought um real poised uh the, the game slows down for him a little bit uh kind of a high floor low ceiling guy seemed like to me um but I don't know, like I, as hell, he ran a, I think he ran like a four five forty. He was the fastest quarterback in the uh, in the combine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Um. Let's let's talk about let's before we go to corners again. Let's let's might as well talk <laughs> about these guys. Um. Since we're talking about Desmond Ritter. Yeah. So, you know, let, let's let's put this. I have a. Uh, I have a. I had. I put out a. A few polls today, and here's the question. Uh, I don't want to block. Yeah, this, didn't rig that poll at all, Dave. But go ahead. <laughs> so the meet the media was coming out that he wouldn't sign a one year extension, right? So yeah, I made it a what... three year total contract. So I said, "What would you rather have, Kirk Cousins as QB three for more years?" Now I also watched Purple Daily, who was willing to give up three first round draft picks. Who everybody loves Purple Daily, right? Three first round draft picks. Purple for the win. Did a mock draft. Gave up three first round draft picks. And who'd he take? But Anthony Richardson. So whether it's Will Levis or whatever, two of the biggest shows, one and two picked, is said that we'd have to give three first round picks to go get one of those two quarterbacks. So I compared the two. Kirk Cousins QB for three more years. Kirk Cousins or Kirk Cousins accepts a trade in the Vikings trade three first round picks to move up in the draft to get a QB. I, I guess Justin already said this. What do you think the percentage was of Kirk Cousins for three years, John? The, and this is with 581 votes. I bet you um, this is from my this is from my six thousand Twitter follower. Whatever. I bet you this is pretty close. I'll go 60 40 A B. That's my guess. 60 40 A. So yeah. 60's A is Kirk I, Cousins I, for three more years. I think the picks will scare him up, but I think it's close to 50 50. I bet. Well, 60 40 was pretty close. Uh, 64% Kirk Cousins for three years and uh, trade three first round picks, move to take QB at 36%. I think it was a relevant poll because. And uh, what kind of spurred it for me was I was being accused of uh, being delusional uh, that, you know, Kirk Cousins, you know, that Kirk Cousins could win a Super Bowl. I have another poll on that. But um, people would rather, 571 people, 581 people would rather have Kirk uh, for three years than trade three first round picks to move up in this year's draft. And that's the way I, I think I phrased it. I think that was a fair comparison of what's being talked about on YouTube. Am, am, am I wrong, Justin? Well, yes, but, you know, where do I start? Okay. Oh, I am so, wrong? Okay, yes, go ahead and tell me why wrong. I'm wrong. Trade three first-round picks. Well, obviously, you're going to trade Kirk Cousins, 
So mm-hmm. what are you getting for Kirk Cousins? Are you getting a first for Kirk Cousins? Thereby, it's really sure. trading two. Uh, so Kirk you got to give away two more first round picks. Okay, well, you didn't phrase that's the question that way. Picks. If you phrase the question, Kirk and two additional first round picks, that's different than three first round picks because three first round picks is this year, next year. And so I can't assume year. what we'll get for him. I can't oh, assume okay, what fine. we'll get for him. I mean, again, it's. I, first off, I'm making try- the argument that the people reading this poll wouldn't realize we'd get picks back for Kirk Cousins. You're right. I can't assume anything. You no, can't I'm assume kidding. that. Okay. No, I can't. Jokes aside, um, <laughs> would I trade three first round picks for Anthony Richardson? No, I would not do that. If you put a gun to would my head, trade to- for Will Levis. Will Levis, maybe. Bryce Young, yes. Um, I don't know about Will Levis enough to know. As far as Anthony Richardson goes, I, I guess I'll just, you know, spoiler alert here. If he fell to us at 23, I'd take him, but I'm not trading up for him. I'm not trading up any at all for Anthony Richardson. I like him, but I don't like him enough to trade up for him. If he fell to us, I'd take him. He's not going to fall to us, so it doesn't matter. Um, three first-round picks to get one of the other top guys, is that a lot? Yes. Again, you know my stance. My stance is, is I th- think that we have gone as far as we can go with Kirk. That's not all his fault. It's not all – Everything in the last five years is not all on him. I'm also going to say that it's not none on him either. I am of the belief that you've gone as far as you can, so I'm ready to to move on into a different direction. And if the Vikings brass felt that one of the top quarterbacks in this year's draft was worth moving up, even at the cost of three first-round draft picks or Kirk Cousins and two first-round draft picks, would I choose that option over the fact that Kirk Cousins will be, what, 38, 39 by the time that third year rolls around? Yeah, that's the direction. Th- that's the direction that I would go. Um, am I surprised that sixty some percent said that they'd rather stay stay the course and stay the safe and what you know? Yeah, no, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. yeah so what do you say, John? Four. You'd be thirty five next year, thirty six, yep. thirty seven. So you'd be thirty seven. No, he's thirty five at the beginning of the year, uh, the beginning of this coming. Age so yeah, thirty five next yeah. year, thirty six. The year after and 37 so he's not gonna be 39 he's not gonna be 38 like ryan i thought he's you said three year extension i thought you said three year extension no, three years next okay. three years i'm sorry oh. i read it as extension but okay so oh. go ahead johnny you're so up. three so that's what i actually think makes the most sense for kirk is a two-year extension so i guess three years and the way these are structured it's not you know oh we signed him to a three-year extension so he's here till he's 38 by that math there's outs on these contracts um i i doubt that a deal like that is fully guaranteed um ammo the vikings front office would have negotiating that or the the matt ryan deal um that that just fell apart as as he aged out um you know i mean he's obviously got a a pretty good negotiating agent but i i think the vikings will have just he's in the hall very good on the other side. No, his agent's in the hall of very good. His agent is hall of fame first ballot. (laughs) Yeah. So, but I, but I think the the Vikings have just as much leverage when you, when you bring in things like that. Um, And, and one thing that I'll say about the, the Richardson thing with the three first round picks as a poll, I think that's pertinent because that's kind of the price. We just saw San Francisco do it for Trey Lance. And we talked about Trey Lance. Um, And I think they were like, if Trey Lance hit, they probably win the Super Bowl this year, you know, if he if he was what they were expecting. Um, and I think they were, were just that quarterback away. The rest of that roster is so nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think the Vikings are quite that close as the Niners were. And I also what 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 comes up with the oh get rid of Kirk uh discourse is okay, for whom? For what? What do we move on to? If it's something where the front office identifies a guy like Anthony Richardson as their guy. And does whatever it takes to go get him, I'm on the train. I'm there too, man. Um, if, if there's a I guy there. On, yeah, but the argument a lot of times is just g- get rid of him and like anything else is better. That's not the case. There's, there are better things. Uh, Chris Quasey talked about that threshold. Um, he's obviously a, a top third of the league or so quarterback. He's good. He's irrefutably good. Uh, he had the best playoff performance in the one game he played of any quarterback in the playoffs last season by several metrics. But listen, if you can, if you can make it happen to go get a guy like Anthony Richardson, you've vetted him. The, the offensive coaching staff is on board. 
the 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 ownership's on board. I'm on board, you know. Uh, but I don't want I don't want any sort of aimless rebuilding. I don't want any sort of tear it down for no reason discussion. Uh, that 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 doesn't make any sense to me, and it's rarely a fun conversation to have. But you know, if if you come with a scenario like this, yeah, that sounds great. Um, it, if, if it is, if it does have that whole buy-in, I don't really like the, the one foot in one foot out Kellen Mond kind of pick in this draft. Um, I was not excited about Kellen know. Mond. I like, you know, either, like, yeah, I could see he's a little athletic. Uh, yeah. I like either don't take a quarterback and, and build the, the roster out the best you can for 2023 and, and come back to this, uh, discussion in 2024. Um, but Hey, if they identify their guy in this draft and make it happen, you know, I'm I'm a Vikings fan. I guess the, the the you're you're doing the best job of anybody that can referee Dave and I between our slight differences of how we would go about this. To be clear, I don't want a total teardown like what the Bears did. Okay, but what I also don't want is don't let the idea of competitive rebuild mean that we have to be 75% competitive and 25% rebuild because when you are that high in trying to stay competitive, you hamper your ability to rebuild as fast as you can. I'm not saying trade Kirk Cousins and, 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 and who cares after that. What I am saying is, for example, another guy that I do shows with uh, Mike Castellino, he's like, this isn't the best year to go after a quarterback. This quarterback draft isn't as rich as next year's will be, and we're not in a position to to take a quarterback. So let's just play out Kirk Cousins last year, and then we'll reevaluate then. And I said, this time last year when Mike Zimmer got fired, and I said I'm ready to move on from Kirk Cousins and start the next chapter and start figuring out what that is, you say to me, I want to see one year with him with Kevin O'Connell, and then we'll reevaluate. And so what I'm saying to my buddy is, Next year, you're going to say the same thing. Oh, we kept Kirk Cousins. We won somewhere between 8 and 11 games. We were competitive for the playoffs, so we lost in the wild card round. And once again, we're drafting in the early to mid-20s. And you're going to say, oh, well, we don't we don't have enough draft picks. We don't have the ability to get one of those quarterbacks. So let's sign. It's like at some point, you have to make the choice to say, we can't keep coming up with reasons to never draft a quarterback. And we can't be held back by the fact that the last couple of quarterbacks we drafted, i.e. Christian Ponder and Tavares Jackson, burnt us. At some point, can we at least have a succession plan, regardless of when you move off of Kirk Cousins, regardless of whether you feel – we should move off Kirk Cousins immediately after one year or after three more years. Can we at least have a plan so that there's never so that there's an actual time where there's not an excuse not to do it? That's my biggest thing is there's always a reason not to do it. Sure. And quick thing, Rhino, 35, 36, 37 is three years. Just so you, just so to remind you. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't, Kirk isn't going to take a non-guaranteed yeah, deal. I, I wasn't saying not, I wasn't saying you. he's gonna take a non-guaranteed deal. I'm just saying there's a chance it's not fully guaranteed. <laughs> Too evil. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying there's a chance there's a, a mutual out after 2024 or something like that. Um, it, you know, I'm not. I don't see another three years, 84 guaranteed, and obviously that number would be higher now. But it, I don't think it's. If if I'd, I'd be upset, I, I guess if it okay, was yeah. a three I was years say. fully guaranteed contract. Um, yeah, um, but I'm interested in. I don't think it makes sense to have a fully guaranteed 37 year, you know, a year 37 contract either. No, and and show them, hey, here's what and, happened to Matt Ryan. Here's and if Kirk Cousins yeah. demand, uh, d- won't step off of that, then I'm like, hey, you got a one year prove it deal to the rest of the league so you can go earn those guaranteed monies again. Um, which is, you know, I kind of expected him to go after two more years, um, you know, off a season like that, um, which many. Th- still apparently think wasn't good enough or a good a good year or whatever but you know some do um you know i think around the league you're gonna look at that season and say hey um it's worth i mean if any other player put that shit out there you'd be like saying that guy deserves a deserves an extension i i imagine quasi who said he may never see another guy who can throw that good um and so he, you're buying he, that. He, he just sinker, got rid right? of all his leverage. Uh, not 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 impressed with the equacy on that. As you know, talking up her cousins like that right before contract negotiations, I would expect you to like. Yeah, he's he's like he's okay. 
Um, KOC has been able to squeeze some things out of Cousins that many of us never thought we'd see. I'd trust KOC to get the best out of whatever QB it, he is. Thank I you. think letting him get to the line with 15 seconds to go was the main thing um, because he was able to get up there, read the defenses, adjust, you know, a lot more. Um, I'm with uh, Mary and Long Kirk as a QB. He won't be picking close enough top, the yeah. top of the draft to take one. Um, you just need to, you just need to collect picks, move back, collect picks. You can do it in 2024. In my opinion, I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I, I put that video out there about 2024 of getting a, a quarterback. Go ahead, I'm not opposed to getting one now. I mean, I would, if we went out and drafted a guy, I'm like, okay, we turn the page. Let's go. I'm a Viking fan. I don't care who's playing quarterback. I'm going to root for him. But I mean, if we take one this year, I, I was uh, talking about trading them in the off season last off season in my podcast before I went on YouTube. So I don't, I don't know. What's up? Yeah. GG. GG Go ahead, Sports. Johnny. That's uh, that's exactly right. Caleb Williams is way better than any QB in this, uh, in this draft. Um, and I think, I think that there, there was a comment that said we will be picking, we won't be picking high enough when, when Kirk's the quarterback, I don't I don't care about that. If you're if you're picking at 24, go make it happen. You know, if if you have if you identify your guy at quarterback in the draft, go get him. You know, I I don't care if you if you fall in you don't have to plan all season to be bad enough to be in a position to take a quarterback highly in the draft. You can take a quarterback highly in the draft without starting there. You know, um so yeah, it might be a big, uh, a big load of picks you have to fork over. It, it might be something else, but I don't see, I don't see that as being that much of a hindrance to going and getting the next guy, as some people do. Um, but I think what it does sometimes is, is keep the the front office and the staff or whomever, you know, just just uh, attached enough to what they have. Mm-hmm. Um, that that they're unwilling to to go and make that happen but you know if if they like i said if they identify a guy they they like pay whatever price it is if you if you think you found your quarterback especially with kevin o'connell under the helm i don't want to hear much about Tavares jackson and christian ponder and joe webb when brad childress and leslie frazier and mike zimmer were the head coaches um <laughs> in in charge of developing these guys and getting them to where they need to be um if you think if you if you are into if you subscribe to the hey Kevin O'Connell unlocks Kirk Kevin O'Connell can take Kirk to the next level how do you feel about Kevin O'Connell with with a guy who can move and and uh, and has yeah, some yeah. youth to him and some some moldability um, you know I I don't I don't think that Kirk puts this glass ceiling on you necessarily I think there's a lot of factors. Um, but again, you know, there there are better talents out there and there are better talents that have yet to come into the league. So I just I just want there to be a plan when it comes to that transition. Um, I want it to be finite. I don't want it to I don't want to hang on to Kirk long enough to where you, you missed out on a couple windows to get an upgrade. Um, and I don't want to necessarily just cut them loose uh, too early to, to where we have that. Uh, you know, that, that sort of lull season, which again, I'm not, I, I don't want the Vikings to be bad as a fan. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid of that season. I understand that you can get worse to get better sometimes. Um, but I just don't think that's as realistic as fans think it is because just the, the front, all the, all the jobs on the line that go into these decisions, the people that are making these decisions have a lot of, uh, a lot more things at play than we do when we speculate. Absolutely. Um, There's yeah. no doubt about that for me. And I don't know how old you are, but I'm going to be 44 here in a couple of months. I think my jadedness about wanting to take the next step sometimes comes across as, well, I, Kirk Cousins is the problem. Kirk Cousins isn't the problem. He's also not the solution in my opinion, but that's a whole nother conversation. But what I fear, and maybe it's because I root for all Minnesota sports. I know some Vikings fans have other teams and other leagues that they follow. And so maybe they actually have seen some of those other teams actually win a championship. I don't know. But 
my biggest fear is, is that I agree with everything that you've said so far, but that last sentence that you said was the key, the people making the decisions. We have to remember the people making the decisions ultimately are Ziggy and Mark and Ziggy and Mark get attached to certain players. And most importantly, Ziggy and Mark get attached to not being bad. Okay. My stance has always been, of course, they want to win a Super Bowl. Of course, they want to do. I mean, they've sp spent a lot of money since they have owned this team, both on the players as well as the facilities. So in no way am I saying they're bad owners or in no way am I saying they're cheap. But I think sometimes their mindset is they are they care a little bit more about not being bad than they do about being great. And sometimes that can hinder. It's like if you it's like if you play in poker tournaments, some guys play poker tournaments to win the tournament and some guys play poker tournaments to collect as many cashes as they can. What's the, the first objective is to not be eliminated before you get into the money. And I feel like the Wilfs play building their team as far as I want to make sure we are still competitive at the end of December and let the chips fall with the rest of it after that. I think they're so desperately afraid of having a year where they take a step back. And so to your point about the people making the decisions, I don't know. I'm not convinced yet that the people who are making the decisions are going to be allowed to truly make the decisions. If the owners say, no, 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 we're not going that way because that's not what we do. I mean, am I on to something or am I on something there, Johnny? Cause I know what Dave's thoughts are. So what do you think? Yeah, I'm with you there. Um, it's, it's been an ownership group that, since they took over has been has been obsessed with being competitive obsessed with being in the mix so every a lot of off seasons i should say um in the 2000s have felt sort of like this one sort of like it's close um you know let's retool more than rebuild um and i think there's something to be said for that Sixth highest winning percentage of all NFL teams all time. Something to be said for that. Um, we've had a lot of entertaining seasons as Vikings fans. Something to be said for that. There's nothing to be said for no Super Bowl victories. There's nothing to be said for no Super Bowl appearances in the 2000s, um, especially with some of the rosters that they've fielded. Um, I mean, imagine if they if they caught Brett Favre two seasons earlier. I think, you oh, know, yeah. if, you, if you get, if you get 39 year old Brett Favre twice, you know, that you might win the big one the, 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 the season after that. Um, but to, uh, to two evil to hopes question, or if we just don't fumble the ball like five times, or if you don't fumble the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or if Brad or children you throw it across your body on the last, or, yeah. Or, or uh, if Childress and uh, Bevel say, you know what, maybe we should max protect once or twice. Once or twice. Yeah, you're right. Um, but to, to evil, two evil to hopes, question yeah you know if it's i'm not i don't know if i've, I've watched enough to have a, a firm take on who i like better between young and stroud um but both of them at least right now look like they'd be worth something like that you say mortgaging the future you know obviously you ask what exactly that means but if we're talking that three firsts if we're talking um hey we have a chance to get this guy kirk doesn't like it let's let's come to that table and and see what we can do to get rid of Kirk get this guy into into the first team reps i'd i'd be all for that um you know if if they if they completely came out of left field and made a move and moved into like the the top 5 got one of these guys Whew. you know i'd be jumping up and down that it's not you know i'm i'm not necessarily super attached to one thing or the other um and i think there there are hundreds of ways to skin this cat, you know? Um, but I think it's gotta be something like this in the near future. Um, I'd like to have a, a backup plan in place with Kirk still on the roster. Um, I know that can get a little dicey with, with egos and everything like that, but um, that, that would feel more linear uh, growth. I feel like um, mm -hmm. just getting his backup in as he's kind of on his way out and, um, and, and, and sort of do it that way. But again, of course, that's kind of a touchy situation. But I, I, I like think you got to go pretty soon, stuff. right, John? I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Got a hard out at the top of the hour. couple minutes here. Yeah. I can, yeah. I've so got before I go, I, I'm going to do, and I think we got, I think my, uh, Justin might want to stay on a lot longer We get, since we got a lot of people in here. Um, so um, I did two other things since we're talking about Kirk. Um, oftentimes, of, 
I'm told that nobody thinks Kirk can win. You know, majority of fans don't think Kirk can win, win a Super Bowl. And I asked that at the beginning of last year after eight one season. Um, it was higher last year, actually. So after an eight win season, it was actually higher. This year, I did it. Um, Kirk Cousin capable of winning the Super Bowl as a team's QB, just in general. Is he incapable of doing that? Only talking about Kirk, not the team. 515 votes. Where do you think it was on yes, Kirk is, and no, Kirk isn't, John? Give me a ballpark. Um, it's probably it's probably lower than I think it should be. Um, what do you think it? You think, I think yes it, I think wins like out? 70, or? I think it's like 70, 30, No, that's kind of my guess. The exact me. opposite of the first one. Sixty four. Okay, seventy five, so twenty five. Right. Yeah. Last year it was eighty five. Cool. So uh, okay. he's actually won thirteen games compared to eight, and it's actually gone down. And there's but there is more voters. So I probably had about 200 more voters. And I did this one for fun because um, a lot of people will k- say, you know, Kirk Cousins is not an elite quarterback. I have said he can play elite, right? You know, you've seen him in a game play elite. And I, I put this out there. QB played, which QB, uh, which, who played QB better in 2022? Aaron Rodgers, yeah. Tom Brady, Russell Seriously, Wilson, <laughs> Kirk Cousins. <laughs> That's a funny one. Hey, welcome to my That's- poker game where I've got a stacked deck. and I Russell won. Win. Percent stack deck. I so I built this. Uh, I built the I built this Twitter following just doing follow for follow for like five six years before I ever did YouTube. Yeah. So I d- I did not disclude anybody that disagreed with me. I don't block people. No, These I'm talking just... about the options was a stack deck. So Aaron, elite. Things. I picked elite quarterbacks that we all wanted. Um, uh, that people talked about getting. Um, Aaron Rodgers two percent played better. Uh, Tom Brady, 4%. Kirk Cousins, 93%. And I, I just point that out is like he played better than four what are probably going to be Hall of Fame quarterbacks this year. I'm I'm just, you know, it, it is it is possible for a player to play better than a guy that is thought to be a Hall of Famer or an elite quarterback in his time. It just so happens he played better than him this year. And I don't think that is a crazy thing to say. And I can't wait to look at the chat to see what they had to think. And thank you, John, for showing up. Yes, uh, me and John are trying to work something out to be uh, to him be more of a regular appearance on uh, on my channel. Uh, he does great work. Uh, let me pull pull this banner off uh, so you can see he's a daily skull on Spotify. Uh, I got you at. Twitter, Johnny NFL at Johnny B Boyd 12. If you want a rat, you know, if you want a just center Viking fan that sees it both ways, this is your guy. And that's why I like having him on the show. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me guys. I've got to jump no, on another one. But, uh, yeah. Thank we'll, you so we'll much. If I get off soon enough, I'll go see it. What's the show you're going to be on? Uh, it's called Necessary Roughness. You'll find it on the YouTube channel called. Steve I think I'm subscribed yeah. to it now that you mention oh, it. It's on. It's yeah. on the banner of your. Uh, if you guys ever want to know, uh, the, the show he's on is the banner of his Twitter um, channel. So un- unnecessary roughness. Yeah, we're doing a mock off season for the Texans and the shitty Bears. If you guys want to check it out. Oh wow! <laughs> All right, and, yeah, I'm on the, you know who I got on tomorrow? I got uh, Micro Mike. Uh, I saw coming that. on tomorrow. So we're, I'm cool. going to ask him all about what he thinks about the Vikings and what he thinks the Lions are going to do in the draft. So. Yeah, one pride. All right, thanks, guys. Checks See in you. the mail. In all seriousness, <laughs> thanks <laughs> again. Yeah, Pleasure talking to you, man. Great Talk to good. have you again. Let me bring this guy up. Um, oh, shit. Um, oh, I thought him. you met somebody um, else. Will Levis. Yeah. I like him. I wouldn't I, mind. I, I'm not looking at the other two guys because everybody's talking about them, and I don't think we'll get them because everybody else is talking about them. So I thought, Probably. hey, if these guys fall down, uh, I just think he's got it all, man. What do you think? I would take him. I don't know. Again, here's here's the problem, and it gets back to the conundrum of, and it's not just Kirk. It's This is how the Vikings pretty much always are. They're always good enough to make the playoffs and therefore not be in a position to take – high end or franchise potential quarterbacks, but not good enough to win a Super Bowl. But no, I like Will Levitz. I think he's the most balanced of all of the quarterbacks there. I I would take Will Levitz over um, Anthony Richardson. Um, I think Anthony Richardson probably has a higher ceiling, but he most definitely has a lower floor as well. 
Um, no, Will Levitz, I, 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 if they traded up to – like if they could – how high do you think they'd have to trade up to get Will Levitz? Let me ask you that. Gosh, they're, I mean, everybody's – Where is he going? Um, what's that? Yeah, where where is he going in these mock- – I'm not much of a mocker, so you tell me how high would they have to trade up. <laughs> so I've seen – and it's crazy. Some people are um, seeing these computerized mock drafts, right? Yeah, yeah, These yeah. computerized mock drafts of Anthony Richardson going as high as third. So third? I'm like – yeah, so I, like these top four quarterbacks oh, really? seem to be going in like the top 10. And okay. if it's anything like last year, somebody's going to fall far enough that, hey, you might take a chance at. I mean, I th- I think when I look at film with Tony, uh, Anthony Richardson, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, my God, this guy's got so much freaking talent. Then I go, hey, I'm just watching highlights. Right. I didn't watch every game. I heard he disappeared in September, right. a whole month. And I'm like, okay, so what um, What about that? And then I'm like, 53% passing percentage? And they said something about only two elite quarterback or two, I don't know, two quarterbacks. And I think one was Josh Allen and another one that was pretty high end. But they had like 59% um, completion percentage. 53 is crazy low. And when we got Dante Culpepper, he sent a college collegiate record in completion percentage. So. Right. To, t- to say, hey, let's go out a guy who played one year, 53%. I don't think this guy is a – I think, yeah, he'll be exciting. He we probably will win some games, and they'll be awesome, and he'll look great. Mm-hmm. But the NFL will figure out a guy who can't throw. Um, accurately. yes, yes. Yeah, I, I and that's why that. I fear about Anthony Richardson. Now, I don't have that same fear about Will Levis. He's not as big an athlete running the ball, but his arm is a – cannon and he's in the 60s and percentile and percentage um he scrambles very effectively people compare him to josh allen as far as like the running and the arm Mm -hmm. uh whether or not and keep in mind he's coming from kentucky playing in the sec compared to where josh allen was playing so that's a crazy ass good comparison um what do you i mean i know you i'd love to i mean i'm not gonna say that I know everything that there is to know about the guy. What I am going to say is, yes, if he got past 12, let's say, like, let's say, well, let's say he gets past 13, which is the Jets. If the Jets don't take him and he's there at 14, then that's the kind, that's the player that I would say, yes, that's the one I, I would trade up 10 spots for. I'd give up my first round pick next year, plus the other change. I would like to, I mean, all jokes aside, and I'm just being funny just to get you going. Yeah, if he's at 14 and I could trade Kirk Cousins and my first-round pick to get up to get that guy, yeah, I would do that in a heartbeat. And I would go with the growing pains of not having him sit for one year because he would be under Kevin O'Connell and company. But being as how that is completely unrealistic, even more so than him being there at 14 to begin with, yeah, there would be a point in time where that's the kind of guy that I feel safe enough to where, all right, if I'm going to take this, I agree. As I said earlier, if Richardson fell or let's, all right, I'll, let's be more realistic. If Richardson fell to say like 17, then, okay, now I'm talking about maybe trading up to get him. He's not going to fall to 23. He's not going to fall to 17, but Will Evans, Will Evans. Yeah. I like that guy. I think he's the safest play of all these. Yeah, I, events, if I'm being honest, I mean, but I don't think he has that. I don't think he has. I don't think he has a seat. Let's see. You know, I always say that Kirk Cousins is the safe play where he's got the highest floor and the lowest ceiling, right? But in this instance, for for a rookie quarterback, for this guy, yeah, I would I would trade up for that guy. The only downside I have on him, and it's not a huge one, is is he, even though he's six five or six four, I forget. Um, mm-hmm. His delivery is like a short, is kind of um, a half. Del- it's like it's it's not a he's not sidearm, thank God, mm-hmm. um, but it, it's from the ear. And it's just like a shortstop, like pull it back and fire kind of shortstop throw. Well, but he is 6'5", and I know people could get him to throw it over the top more. Um, I worry about that because, like, remember, um, uh, I think we were talking – I think he, the guys were talking about it last night um, with uh, – God, I just lost his name, man. Who are you talking about? Our quarterback um, played for Miami this year. Um God damn it. Richardson? We, no, a quarterback we drafted a while back in the first round. 
Teddy, Teddy. So, so Teddy would um, did not have a good touch on long balls, and I think it was because he threw it kind of sidearm, right? I mean, he was, you know, um, he wasn't over the yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he wasn't, wasn't over the top, top. and right. he threw, and he wasn't accurate very at all. And I watched the game sitting next to his father one day. Is that and right? It was the worst. It was the worst fucking game of his life. He <laughs> oh, had no. three picks. It was horrible. I was embarrassed for his dad. I was felt no. I felt I wasn't embarrassed for him. I was I felt bad for his dad. Yeah, I had to yeah. sit with all these Viking fans, and we as Viking fans, you know, there was I know there's some people want to tear into how bad he played in that game, and I can't remember who he played or uh, I think I don't I forget what year, specific year it was, but it was it was god awful and. Uh, in, in in a lot a lot of it has to do with he couldn't he couldn't really deliver the long ball very much and that's what I worry about any type of delivery like that, but I mean I think he more than makes up for it with his uh, ability to scramble, um his ability to run um he's like a four seven forty guy yeah um yeah so in Joe Burrow neighborhood yeah yeah um Definitely. honestly Peyton Manning he ran four <laughs> seven. Peyton Manning and uh, and and uh, Pat Mahomes ran the same forty time in the combine, but with this guy, this guy is actually going to the combine. So mm-hmm. Will Levis yeah. is going to the combine. No, that's that's my guy. I mean, again, to trade up for Stroud or Young, th- that would cost way the heck too much. Will Levis is a guy that I would absolutely be willing to to trade up for. Now, so here's a couple corners. You know, everybody has us a maybe a getting a corner because mm-hmm. that's what we love to do. Um, I agree, Michael Miller. He is a baller. He's my guy. Um, if anybody, if he, if he fell to a situation where we could draft him, and you know, whatever, I, I would be excited about a guy like that. You know, people accuse me of being in of wanting Kirk to play till he's seventy five years old. Um, <laughs> uh, for the Vikings, I'm uh, literally a realist, and I've said multiple times, if if we like a guy, go get him. I will root for him regardless. I do. I did trade Kirk Cousins videos in the off season last year mm-hmm. as possible scenarios. And who would we go get? I picked Jalen. Uh, I put Desmond Ritter as my number one guy. Uh, n- number one QB. I had us draft. I, I did. I did a video on how we draft a guy in the second round to replace Kirk Cousins long-term. You know, th- this is a legitimately uh, Will Levis is legitimately, I think, a can't miss, in my opinion. Uh, like you said, his floor is low, like Kirk's, mm-hmm. but I think his ceiling is much higher. Honestly, um, Josh Allen didn't pull his weight this year like he did the year before, and I think it has a lot to do with losing an offensive coordinator. So I think coaching Possibly. has a lot to do with that. Yeah. But he has that ceiling uh, that's just crazy. <laughs> and I, I, Yeah, and sorry. I, I – I'm getting well, old. Well, you said Miami. He played at Louisville, didn't he? I said he played at Miami this year. Oh, I thought you meant in college. I'm Dolphins. Like, all right, all right, Miami. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you now. All right, Eddie. I'm with you. Take Bridgewater. Right. Yes. Two gloves. What's up, Rap? Two gloves. Two gloves. So we're going to get extend Kirk for three years and get Will Levis? No. So, uh, <laughs> um, so, so first of all, you think you're going to – yeah, earlier he says uh, three years equals – three-year extension equals four – um, I was talking about two year extension, so three years total. All right. Um, okay. I I don't want to go four. I don't. The reason why I don't want to go four and I don't want to go three is because um, money wise, it makes absolutely no sense when we got a guy a left tackle that needs to get paid too, and we got to you know, and Justin and Jefferson's going to yeah. get paid right. Yeah. So we right. got those two guys coming up. Are we going to really have our left tackle, our our number one receiver, and our quarterback taking up ninety million of the cap? I don't think so. So yes, it that would. I said twenty twenty five is the perfect time to be having a new quarterback. Um, so if we get an if we get an extension that shows a three year, uh, the third year deal has some guaranteed money to entice us to keep them. Um, then that's probably okay with me, but I don't want, I don't want three years guaranteed just because I don't want that third year to be guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, if we had a one year extension where it was fully guaranteed again, I'm not, as long as we have a plan to get a backup to replace him, I am cool with that. If we don't have a plan to do that, 
then none of it makes any sense. But what so. also doesn't make sense is to never get that plan because you're just not you, but the team is content and feels, well, we've got Kirk Cousins and we can still be competitive and we believe we can still win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. So we're not going to invest into our next quarterback because we got other holes on our roster. I think the crux of the difference in mindset between me and you is, is, is just this. Let's say the Vikings do not extend Kirk Cousins, that this is his last year, and we let him walk because we don't trade him at the trade deadline. We, we don't try and re-sign him and trade him. You would get a roughly a, a third-round pick in 2025, if you if I recall correctly. You're telling me that, right? Uh, what was that? If you let Kirk Cousins walk after this year, in other words, no extension, and, and you just let him walk after this year, you'd get a third-round compensatory. Most likely because someone would okay. sign him big time. You know? Right. So I think the difference between me and you is simply if I could get, I don't know, two seconds or a first and a third right now. I mean, Jamie said two first last night. I said, I'll do it in a fucking heartbeat. Okay. So, but two there's first, a lot of people yeah. that would tell you you're crazy. If you trade Kirk cousins, even for two first round picks, because what do you have left and who's going to play quarterback for you? I am not beholden to I, I've obviously like what, um, what Johnny said. Nobody wants, I've never once said I want the team to be bad. Of course not. I'm, but I'm not beholden to the you notion. You just said of, they would never win with Kirk. They right? never win a Super Bowl. Is I don't think they would. I don't, right. I, I have little to no faith that they could win a Super Bowl with Kirk. Well, it's Cousins. an easy gamble because he's 35, right? You know, he'll be 35 in August. The, well, I've been saying that for a couple of years. So it'll be an like easy gamble, myself. right? But what I'm saying is, is that. The idea of we have to do everything within our power to at least be competitive in 2023, I'm not I'm not stuck on that. I'm open to if we were to trade him and we were to get two first round picks and then we were to actually find our succession plan, if that comes at the cost of not being in competitive in 2023, I'm okay with that. I really am. The other side of it is, well, why don't you get your succession plan, let him sit for a year, and then we can sort of be competitive in 2023. Being competitive in 2023, okay, that's nice, but it's not one of those, oh, we've got to, got to, got to, got to be competitive. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> I can't wait. Thursday's going to be fun. Thursday's going to be fun. A realist who wants Kirk. This joking. is exactly what I'm talking about. I think he was joking, man. I'm yeah, pretty sure he was joking. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, he, I know people try to get a rise out, out of me or whatever and say, I, when I say, so um, nice, yeah, yeah uh, I can see him getting a two-year extension. Jesus, Dave wants him to play till he's seventy, <laughs> and I, 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 that's not the first time I've ever got that, right? So, no, no. but um, I guess what I, I guess think what, what I'm saying is, and what I'm Go saying ahead. is, is if the option is we keep Kirk and we be competitive next year, which means we're going to have at least seven wins because that's what Kirk does. He's 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 train wreck proof as long as he's healthy. You're not going to win any fewer than seven games with Kirk Cousins. All right, so you're going to win somewhere between seven and ten, depending on how well Flores does with the defense. And once again, you'll be in the late teens, early 20s, picking and not being in a position to take a quarterback if you don't get one this year. Okay, and then you get a compensatory pick in the third round of 2025. If I compare that to getting – let's just say one first round pick and maybe a third and then being higher in the draft next year, because you don't have a Kirk cousins who's going to make sure that you're at least competitive this year. I'd rather have that because I know okay, here's the thing. You have more faith in Kirk than I do. I think it's safe to say, right? You've made, well, you did a show where the, the theme of it was curb stomp Kirk cousins. Well, um, again, that was hours, rap so. show that I sat in on and I, <laughs> And when rap got out of, when he got totally crazy, I did reel him back in and say, okay, now you're just being ridiculous. But if you didn't, okay, uh, shameless plug here for anybody who didn't see my live last night, go to purple and gold for days. I know the video is garbage. So just listen to it. Don't worry about actually watching it, but just, you know, listen to it. You know, maybe you got launched. Do you have that video or something? Well, you know how the video was when we started tonight, all choppy and whatever. I, I, it was the same thing all last night too. And, and I was by myself and nobody told me my picture was garbage. So then I went back and looked at it as I was posting it. I'm like, it happened to me too. Yeah. It happened to me before too. But the audio was just fine. So if you haven't, uh, if you haven't you've checked it out, I think I was objective. I think I was neutral. I think I gave pros and cons both sides. But what I'm saying is I'm not afraid of not being competitive next year. If that means we're going in a different direction, we are getting draft uh, capital in return for Kirk Cousins as opposed to getting a third round pick two years from now. That's, I think, the difference is people are like, 
Well, who are you going to play quarterback this year? Nick Mullins? I don't care if we play quarterback this year if we get a first-round pick for Kirk and we're actually in a better position to start the rebuild. But to your point, they're not going to do that because you don't bring in Flores and then go that direction. What's going to happen is simply as follows. The Vikings have said to Kirk, we want you for one more year. Kirk has said, I don't want to do for one more year. I'm tired of dating. I want to, We've been dating for a long time. We keep renewing the lease on our apartment. It's time to put a ring on it. Let's get married. Give me a three-year deal because this is the last time that I have the ability to get a final contract, which is his right. Nobody, I don't begrudge him that. I'm saying it's on the Vikings to stick to their guns. If Kirk says, I want a three-year deal, they can't give in, they can't cave into that. Giving You're him a three year extension. Three year right. extension. You cannot give him a three year extension. I'm sorry. I don't care how big a Kirk Stan one is, or whether you you like Kirk but don't love him, or whether you hate or whether you want him to play till he's 70, right? Like or me. whether you want him to play until yeah. he's 100. Yes. But jokes aside, <laughs> to me, if I'm the Vikings, I say, Kirk, I want you for one more year. Here's the deal. Well, I don't want that. Okay, well, then you can play out the last year and then you can test free agency, like you said earlier. And if Kirk Cousins says, well, then I'm not going to play here. I'm like, really? You're not going to play here? Fine. Give me a list of teams you'll wager no trade clause to, and then I'll see if we can find a deal. But what I'm not going to do, if I had to give him a one-year extension for slightly below market value, like again, $35 million, yeah, okay, I can live with that. But I'm not living with a three-year extension averaging 45 to $50 million. I'm not living with that. I'm not. I'm not okay with that. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's longer the short is I would just trade him now and just be done. I mean, with it's it. easy but to get uh, and it's easy to get upset. And for some people, not you, but uh, to go on Twitter tirades uh, about how Kirk should take 20 million. I would take 20 million if I made 200 million. Let me uh, 11th that highest point. paid player in the NFL. Well, geez, the cap has gone up and a lot you know, a long uh, longer than when freaking Marino was playing. I'm sorry. So yeah, you can't compare freaking salaries today and then you know all time greats and shit like that. So yeah, I agree. But, I, I, I mean, going on I... like that and, and calling out fans and stuff like that. I mean, uh, here's a good point. Like for, for instance, like uh, we brought up oh, uh, yeah. we brought up a guard here. Like, so yeah. uh, I like Ed Ingram. I don't think like Phil Mackey thinks in, that he's an idiot. Like he said on air yesterday. I don't think. Uh, uh, hit. Um, I don't think Ed Ingram's an idiot playing guard like uh, he had said, and that we need to replace him. Uh, but I do, would look at a guard. I would look at any improvement in any team. I just don't think guard is the you know that high in the draft is is the, is that big of a deal or is that is that that an importance for us? I would right, if right. it was a guard there that we like. I'm still tra- I'm trading down to collect more picks. I want more picks in 2024. I um I'm all about getting more picks the next year and do what we can with this year's you know picks. Um, but yeah, I don't see guard going 2023. And I took a chance to give Phil Mackey some grief again. Well, uh, calling calling, this. calling a Vikings player an idiot on air. Um, I didn't hear that. I was that today. Or I, yesterday? Yeah, he he was. Yeah, it's just it's just silly to take shots at players on, on air like that. I don't know. I, I didn't hear that part. Maybe I maybe I skipped over that part. Well, you know, when they're saying Kirk Cousins, um, all about the money, doesn't want to win. Um, just comments like that don't make any sense. What's wrong with that he, comment? Because he took less money. He took less money no, to come for us. Stop. He took he took six million not- less to come for us. He took I in um he thirty three million, even though like the whatever the salary is thirty five or whatever the cap is thirty five, he took thirty three million, which was under under um the value. He could have probably got somewhere else if uh, he he didn't want to stay with us. You don't think he had made more than thirty five million last year? Okay, are we talking about when he signed or are we talking about when he got extended last year? Extended. I mean he didn't extend for um he didn't extend for market value and people were still were disappointed. He yes, almost he, were disappointed. He for, yeah, he extended for thirty-five. Couldn't get mad just, at him for ta- not taking forty million. I mean, okay, yeah, he, he took, took thirty-five less, instead did, of forty. Okay, that's not like that's not okay. So his market value last, but he's year all about the money. Million. He's all about the bag, and you do market you put out you put out okay, tweets okay, saying, "Oh, okay, I can't believe how many players are rooting for him to get forty million right, more than they are about the team." To address all of these points, last year his market value was around forty. He took thirty-five. If his market value is forty, and but he's all about the money. Doesn't yes. want to win. Taking right. a five million dollar chunk off of what you could have got isn't like some ridiculously wow. If he had taken it for twenty-five million, taking a fifteen million dollar discount, go post 
that's, moving, man. That's not goalpost moving. I said it at the time. You can ask Mike. I said it. Wow, he took five million dollars less. Yes. All he only cares about is the money. Dave, you see the iron? Do you see the? Do Dave. you see that? I mean, Dave. I all I care about is the money. I'm going to take five million dollars less on okay, the value. Here's, here's what I said what? yesterday, and and then I'll try and tie it back to Mackey or not. But whatever. My point is this: <laughs> when Kirk Cousins says. I want to be with the Viking. I want to retire a Viking and I want to win a Super Bowl here. Okay. That's awesome. Those are some real nice fighting words. But when it comes time to extending you, if first off, let me stop for the 87th time. Every player has every right to get as much money as they possibly can. I do not begrudge a single player that. And I don't expect a player to take any kinds of discounts. I don't. I don't expect Adam Thielen or Dalvin Cook or Kirk Cousins. Or anybody quick, else to say, I'm, I'll here. give some money back. Quick yeah. point here, because I don't want to go. Um, That's a good he, point. Thank his you for contract was not $40 million. You cannot blame any player for void years. Yes, you can. It is solely 100% put on the GM for putting out money like that. He did not sign a $40 million contract. No, yes, what he can saying, have a $40 okay, million dollar cap hit, but that was not him. That is the that is solely the GM. He is not saying, "Hey, you know what you should do? Put some void years on the end of my contract." No, and there's no player doing that. No, 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 Dave. He had a 45, <laughs> going into last year before he signed his extension. He had forty five million dollars left on his cap this time last year. Okay, they added one year and thirty five million. So now his contract has cap hits of two years and eighty million. But because they added the void years, instead of going 40 million last year and 40 million this year, they went 31 last year, 36 this year, and then he's got a 12.5 balloon payment um, starting in 2024 if he is not re-signed. So yes, his contract was two years for 80 million. They just spread the cap hits out due to the void years. So his point, I'll give you half of the point. I'll give um, um, Rhino the other half of the point. Yes, if you take out the void years, his average was forty million a year. It was only thirty-five million in new money because guess what? Some of that forty-five million was prorated signing bonus before they gave him extension. I mean, we're going in. The, my overarching point is this: if Kirk Cousins wants to get every dime that he can, he has every right to, and I'm not mad at him for it. What I am saying is, if I'm Kirk Cousins and I want every dime then I'm not going to come out and say, I want to retire a Viking and I want to raise my family here. And I want to win a Super Bowl. You, no, can't... you should be a bad negotiator. No, if you're going to go for everything, the same he... shit you're no, saying about him me. right now is hey, the same finish. way Justin Jefferson is about. I want to be here. I want to this. I want to win. Exactly. Oh, I want Now it comes out. I want to be the highest paid player in and the I'll league. I'll say the same thing to him. I mean, I will say the same thing to him. <laughs> Dave, you might not agree with my arguments, but you know I'm consistent with them. What I have said is I will not begrudge a single player for getting every dime they can. What I'm saying is if you're going to make the comments as a 35-year-old who has already made 200 and some million that you want to stay here for the rest of your career and you want to win a Super Bowl, but guess what? You're still going to pay me my market value. I'm not giving you a discount. Then I'm going to say, well, then don't bother coming at me as a 35-year-old who wants to retire here and win a Super Bowl here. With those comments, if you want to get every dime you can, that's fine. That's what you're right. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Is that coming out of his mouth that he wants every dime? No, it's coming out of, his, coming out of the guy he pays to, to work out of his paychecks. I mean, yes, he is. You're coming acting out of like this has never happened he, before. No, I'm not, Dave. What I'm saying is number Don't one. Tell me you know, you're going to you want to be here and then come out with those comments. I mean, no, that's like, those are your is, words. No, I'm saying I, I can't take a player seriously if they say I want to be here my whole career, the rest of my career, and I want to win a Super Bowl, but I still want all the money. And I said the same daggone thing about Aaron Rodgers two I'm years sorry. ago. Aaron I don't Rogers, think it's been mentioned on, how much money he's wa- asking for. Huh? I'm sorry. I don't think it's been a- I don't think it's been mentioned no, how hasn't. much money he's asking for. That's not the so point. So why are you saying that? What he I'm wants saying- all the money. When he hasn't even, then there hasn't been a report that. of how much money they're talking about. They're talking about years, not I'm, money. I've not said anything about how much he does or doesn't want. I'm saying in a general All the bag. sense. Huh? All the I'm, bag. Saying, I'm saying if he wants as much as he can get, if he wants his market value, then I don't want to hear comments. Which he about- hasn't said. Right? Dave, 
I'm when what she about, hasn't I, did either. I am talking in a general sense. We do but, not know what he has asked for or what. Why not go on historical precedent? Precedent. Huh? He's taken less than his market value twice. No, yeah, okay, that's. Are 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 you lying? Am I lying? Okay, the historical precedent that he has set was blowing up the market and making the quarterback market as high as it is now in the first place. That's the historical precedent he set by getting three years, eighty-four million, fully guaranteed. That's the historical. Twenty-eight million a year. Huh? Twenty-eight million a year, right? He he, he signed for twenty-eight million a year. Yeah, in two thousand eighteen, that is correct. Yeah, and he took six million dollars less. And it pissed off the NFL Players Association. I just, I, I don't, I don't, saying, I, don't, Dave, I, don't I don't see why it's so words. hard. You, you know, I can understand your argument, but then to totally deny the fact and to say that he he's he hasn't taken less money twice than what he was worth than what he could have gotten is, and then he wants all the bag. I, it doesn't jive. I just, I can't why can't why you know. I, I can I can say, hey, I won't take a fourth year. I don't want even a guaranteed third year. But I can't see why someone who is, you know, middle of the road, apparently, you know, that you tell me a lot, that you can't admit that he's taken less. What what why what would it hurt you to admit that? Admit that he's what? taken less twice. Okay. So if I'm offered a job for $1 million and I'm offered another one for $1.1 million, as I currently make, I don't know, less than a hundred thousand, let's just say, then I get to pat myself on the back for taking the million dollar job and say, well, I took less. Okay, fine. I took less than a different offer. The Vikings were a better team than the Jets were. So there was advantages to him to taking less with the Vikings, so to speak, than it would have been to take a deal with the Jets. Okay, great. So he took less money than what the Jets offered him. Okay, great. Then two years into his three-year deal, he signed a $66 million extension for two years. Okay, great. And it helped the Vikings out salary cap wise, but he did not, you know, take half of what he could have gotten. He probably Why took- does it have to be half to impress you? That's not what I'm saying, Dave. All I'm saying is Yeah, that you're 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 saying, you're, you're, you're talking it, you're talking down like it's um like a not a like oh Big deal. He took five million dollars less. With you're acting like he, you're year, acting yes. like you're That's acting like he took home twenty eight million dollars in okay. one year. What did, I'm did, saying did, is this: I'll, how about if you, this? If you sign a contract safety this safety. year for twenty million dollars, you sign a contract for twenty million dollars this year. How much do you take home? Say that again. Well, for for instance, Shaquille O'Neal. Um, I watched a video today. He says his first check he got from, uh, from the you know from his Magic. team yeah. was $20 million. Mm-hmm. You know what he took home? He said he took home. He didn't realize he went out and bought a house for 5 million, bought a three Rolls Royces, spent his entire check of $10.9 million. You took half, you take half of that home almost. You t- you take about 55%. You're in a tax bracket is beyond or 45%. Okay, you're so in basically a 45% tax bracket. So you're saying, Where Oh, you big this? deal. Big deal. He only t- he took five million dollars less on a thir- twenty eight million dollar contract when in actuality he probably took about fifteen home. I mean, I, guess I don't see where you're going with this. My point is this: Can I get you're, back to you're saying it's no big deal to give up five million dollars, man, or six million dollars? Just what don't, I'm saying I don't right now is this: How about we get back to the actual actuals here? Right now, Kirk Cousins' market value is somewhere between forty five and fifty million. Okay, can we agree to no, that? But he should play for twenty, right? I didn't say that. Yes, put that one back up from Spidey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I'm saying if Kirk Cousins comes to the Vikings, if, because he hasn't yet, or we don't know what he's come to, if Kirk says, yeah, I want to be here, I want to win a Super Bowl, but guess what? I want a three-year extension, and I want $145 million on it. That's him asking for his market value, which, to be clear, for the ninth time, he has every right to do. I'm not saying he's wrong if he said, I want a three-year extension on top of the last year of my deal, a three-year extension for $145 million. He has every right to ask that, okay? That's his market value. Uh, Skolmofsky, this is completely incorrect. You didn't make, you didn't take home $200 million. Okay. Take, not even close. Now you're arguing something. I that. took about 110. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that must be rough. My overarching point. Yeah, I know. If he yeah, came must be out, rough. I don't begrudge people for getting what they are owed. I don't. I actually am encouraged by the fact 
going into this next negotiation that twice before he's taken less money. You're I'm making it by sound that. like he took a bucket load less than he could have. No, had. I'm saying all I have said is that he's taken less money, right? By definition, You're saying he's worth 40. He took 35. Yeah. I am encouraged by that. I am not jumping the gun and saying, oh, my God, he wants 45. No one has said that. They said he'd want more than a one year. The same people that complained about his one year extension are the same people now complaining about his possible three year extension. Um, so it's like, you know, you can't win you long term, short term. Honestly, the fact that he did us a favor, I know, uh, I know, uh, I know Rhino says here is that he made it impossible to move any and move any money around. No, I mean, that's true. Um, what, what did it matter if he has a 35 million? What it did avoid you do, uh, was cut him. That's the only thing it did. What do you mean? It, the only the only thing a guaranteed cap hit will do for you is if you cut him or you cannot you'll lose all that money. So it just avo- it keeps you from cutting him. It also doesn't give you okay. It 84 was his first contract and 66 was his second, right? And he played all three years and didn't miss a game. Yes. Outside of the ones yeah, whatever. All right. Here's the point. He signed What's an the 84- point? 84 million on the first three years and a two year extension is 66. That's 150 million, right? If he had signed a five year deal for 150 million, then after 18, if they needed to renegotiate or move some of his money into future years so that they could do stuff, sign other players, what, they would have the had that option. down the road. Yes, they never <laughs> had the option to even do that because he's always signed. Oh, I felt deals. it was. Honestly, I felt it was a better a, a, a win win situation because we could have moved on on from him if it didn't work out. Well, as it turns out, they didn't, which was kind of my whole point. Is they're never going to move on from him until his arm. So falls. I mean, to, to say to say like he should have shined, uh, signed a five year deal and then move and then you know spread the like money what Patrick out. Patrick Mahomes did when didn't do us any favor. Yes, when he wanted to get Joe Tooney, Patrick. Hey, guess what? He signed for ten years. We're going to take some of your money this year. Guaranteed to you in a signing bonus, but we're just going to move the cap hits to year seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> okay, just, sure. I don't know how the pretzels you had to twist yourself into to avoid saying that he didn't take, um, you know, is uh, is is value. Like he 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 couldn't admit that he took less money, and then when you finally did, you you almost made it like it was like yeah, he should have. Or uh, no, you know, it wasn't good enough. Or what are you talking you know, about? Dude? Six million dollars isn't a lot of money. $5 million in one year is not a lot of money. Okay, I mean, fine. All right. Say yes. all right, no. You had to go through a half an hour of telling me here. about how, how he wants his bag when year, there's no precedent Dave. stating that other than he, he signed short contracts, man. He, signed score. he did right. us a favor by signing short contracts. We're not stuck with him for five years. We're not stuck yeah. with him until he's 43 uh, contract like that the freaking Packers have right yeah. now. My, I'm just going to wrap by saying this because I got a few minutes and we got to wrap this anyway here. But right. my point, my point is this, if he were to say, I want a three year extension at 45, 50 million, because that's what my market value is. That doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't that make sense? $45 million for us. It does not make any sense. It does not make any sense for us. No, I know you doesn't. think I'm a uh, Kurt cousins, uh, a water boy, but 40 to $45 million for a 35 year old quarterback does not make any sense. It is a bad move. Just like I thought I was cheering on the Packers of giving him all that money and screwing them in dead cap hit. I was loving it. I like the short term extension he did for us because it gave us some more time to figure things out, move on to a, a new a GM, a new quarterback. Now this whole thing, and I know Gigi brought it up and I, yesterday, uh, Jamie did, and I'm like, yeah, we want to do this, build, you know, build for the future, uh, Kirk, move on from Kurt, go this, and then, oh, and hopefully KOC and Quasi don't get fired in the meantime. Uh, it's just how much how much window would a um uh you know a duo like that have? It's all should they bet their careers on moving up for a you know a QB? And no, they should gotta bet put their that, careers you gotta put on a quarterback that, in the that equation. can't get them past the division around. That's what they should do. What? No, they should just bet on a quarterback who has shown that he can't get past the division round of the playoffs. Just like if – I'll put it to you like this. I'll take Kirk Cousins out of this conversation for a second. 
If I was a Dallas Cowboys fan, I'd be saying the same thing about Dak Prescott. Yeah, I know. He has shown he can't get every. It's funny if you take the non Vikings and non Kirk Cousins fans out of the equation. Everything that people say about Dak Prescott is entirely true for Kirk Cousins. How good was how good was Dallas's defense this year? Uh, almost as good as the Vikings in 2018 and 19, but you know, pretty fucking offense. good, right? Yeah, pretty good. How about that? Got to the same spot, the division round of the playoffs. Same yeah, spot. And how how good was this year's? How, this year's what? Vikings. Oh, so again, we're only comparing one year. Let's I'm, not I'm act- saying he's. I've been. I'm saying he's improved every year. I used to be a detractor, man. I know. Oh, I know you can't. You, you. I think you probably were. You weren't for it, right? You weren't for so the right. getting Kirk. No, in 2018, I was absolutely on board with the signing. Right. After 2019, so I said this window's done. It was time to go. I've actually. I'm like, okay, we're getting Kirk. How is he really that good? I had him on my fantasy team. He had some good. He had that one season, 4900 yards. But he's yeah. that good. And then uh first two seasons I was disappointed. Um and then and then uh he fucking took off and got better every year, in my opinion. Um so I can't compare 2017 or 2018 Kirk, 2019 Kirk with holy shit, I can't believe he what he did this year, 2022 Kirk, because it was an improvement. And to not acknowledge that is I don't know, crazy. And it was equally crazy is for the people and not necessarily you, the people who say that Kirk Cousins, all we need is a top 15 defense and then we're Super Bowl contenders. We don't had a top 15 defense in 18 and 19. Let's not pretend that that didn't exist. I understand that there were other mitigating circumstances like John DeFilippo, like unfortunately, Tony Scott. Mafia, if you want to come on the show anytime, man, we'll have a, we'll have a discussion, but I'm I'm not Rick Sosa and I'm not Joe Spinoza. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll I, I, I I've, serious, I've advocated no, on no, you're not. three occasions tonight of what I was willing to do to trade and uh and a quarterback who I'd go get. <laughs> if you can if you can if you get hey, I'm Joe Spinoza out of that. No, we're not going that's just that silly, way. man. We're that's just silly. You're not watching my show, you're not even listening. It's the echo chamber <laughs> that Kirk haters listen to. Am I is 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 Skull Mafia the guy that said that um uh, that Christian Ponder was better than Kirk Cousins. I'm I think pretty, he, I, I think uh, that was on. Uh, I, in, in my right skull was that you believed Christian Ponder was better than Kirk Cousins, right? Because I think you did appear on that show that one time. I don't know. I might if be wrong. I can, not, I can stand I'm, corrected. I'm guessing he wasn't. <laughs> hey, hey, I'll the just this is where it's gone. I can't. It goes from I can't get my co-host to admit that he took less money twice. Than what he what than what he was worth in the in the open market to I twirl the baton for Kirk Cousins because I can't get someone to admit that he took less money. Okay, if I, I don't recall what the Jets offered him, if the Jets offered him more yeah, than three years, six million dollars. He so left. They offered him what? Six, they, they offered him thirty three million years. three years. So they offered year. him ninety million over three years, and we gave him eighty four. Okay, Kirk took less to play with us by two million a year. What he could have gotten on the open market when he got extended for sixty-six million, which by my count is thirty-three million a year. Okay, um, okay. I don't know what the he answer could have is. Got. Yes, he did take less he... money. You can't. You can't just say it. Well, I, I'm taking your I mean, word. I wasn't for trying to trap me. you. They, you cannot. The whole idea that I have some bear trap here waiting for the I am not a Kirk hater guy. Um, it just the the amount of the just the. the <laughs> The amount of twisting and turning to avoid my apparent bear trap of a can. Yeah, yeah, he took less money, but okay, fine, he took less money. <laughs> so let twice. me circle back and to about so, the five other points you've made here because we really got to get. We're going to go to about. Uh, we're going to go to uh, quarter to the. I thought we liked time. staying on two hours, time walker. Yeah, exactly. No, I I did an hour yesterday by myself, and I thought I was as, as as objective as I could be. I don't know that I can take too much more. What I'm saying about the 35 million last year, yes. It was a $5 million discount. I'll grant you that. What I was saying is with what salary cap issues the Vikings have. Okay, it wasn't you, Skull Mafia. It wasn't you. Sorry. I knew when I'm wrong. I just was asking. Thank you. With how much salary cap mess the Vikings were in this time last year, of which is not entirely Kirk Cousins' fault, when he took a $35 million extension on his deal, people wanted to act like he took a a bucket load less and how he was so helpful helping the Vikings out there. All I was saying was let's not pretend 
that taking five million less than market value was this gigantic pay cut. That's all I was saying. Now, circling back to this year, I have no idea what Kirk Cousins is looking for. We have some evidence that in his initial contract, he took a little bit less, took a little bit less last year. I think he got, probably got his market value during his two-year extension. That's what I'm guessing. But again, I don't know. All I'm saying is that this is his last opportunity to get one final contract. If he were to come out, as you said, for looking for 45 to 50, that's not a good that's not a good contract for the Minnesota Vikings. What I'm saying is he has every right to ask for that. He is not obligated to take less than that. But if he's going to come out and say, I want to be here the rest of my career, but I still want every dime I can get, then I take it, then I take him less seriously for wanting to win a Super Bowl here and wanting to play the rest of his career here. If there's a if there are strings attached to I want to play the rest of my career here and win a Super Bowl, but I still want as much as I can get. Guess what? Getting as much as you can get hampers the ability for you to win a Super Bowl. So all I'm saying is those two statements, if they were to be true, and again, as you said, we don't know. We don't know what he's asking. I'm saying if he does ask for his market, that contradicts him saying I want to stay here the rest of my career and I want to win a Super Bowl here. So that's what I was trying to say. Last question then yeah. for you is um you don't want him though. So you don't have a number that you're willing to take him for, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So there is absolutely no number I, for you to well, take. Well, no, him. I was I'm I'm realistic, Dave. Contrary to popular opinion, I can be realistic once in a while. Okay. If Kirk Cousins said, like for example, even though he's only got a thirty-six million dollar cap hit, he has a forty-eight million dollar cap balance, for want of a better way of saying it. If he said, I'll play for three more years. But total, right? Three more years. No, no, no. If he said the following, and this is unrealistic, so we don't even, it, 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 it's stupid, but I'm just doing it to be dumb. If he says, I will take a three year extension for $75 million, I would take that. And the reason I say that is because then his cap hit for the less next than 20 million a year. No, four years. No, the three years extension for 75 million. Yes. Oh, so that's three. Three. On top of what he's got left, on top of what he's got left. So that would give him four years averaging $31 million a cap hit. I would take, I would do that. I would do 35, 36, 37, 38. Okay. I would do a three-year extension for 75 million. Now there's no way on God's green earth, Kirk Cousins would accept three years, 75 million. Let's not kid ourselves. But to your point is, is there a threshold for me where it's not what I would No want. realistic one, right? Is there a realistic one? No, probably not. Right. So, I mean, is there why an unrealistic one? Yeah. I wouldn't why like not it just say I don't want him under any circumstances. Because if he literally were to take three years, 75 million, even me, as somebody who doesn't have faith that even if we put the team around him, that he could win a Super Bowl for him, you could have an, we could get a really good guard with that extra money we saved. You can get more than just a guard. If he's, if right. his cap hit is 31 million over the next four years, you can get more than just a guard. You can get a lot more than that. Now, saving four million a year or five million a year. What do you mean? Saving? I was saying ten million. So you'd be saving like ten million a year. No, it'd be close. His market value is forty-five to fifty. If he's locked in at thirty. Oh, okay, so you're saying he's worth forty-five. You're saving twenty million. You're saving year. fourteen. 14 to 19, depending on, again, his market value right now is about 45 to 50. And if he's locked in at 31, that's 14 to 19 million year savings. And again, that's locked in for the next four years at 31 million. I would do that. Kirk would, that would be an appropriate amount to give a Kirk Cousins, even at his age, 31 million locked in for four years. I wouldn't do it, to be clear. But what I'm saying is I would accept that in my mind. I would not accept in my mind a three-year, $145 million extension. That's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't matter because neither one of those things are going to happen. <laughs> Nothing hurts my feelings, man. Uh, <laughs> and, All right, for real. Though, we got three if, minutes if Someone's going to be else? sarcastic to me. Yeah. Right. I can be right back. And it's funny, uh, I, apparently it doesn't translate to the chat either. No, it doesn't. It doesn't either. No, way. apparently the chat can't take uh, sarcasm either. So um, I mean, no, I don't want I, I At this point, as I've said, I'm willing to move on because even if you <coughs> could make this defense a top 15 defense, I still don't think we can win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins with a top 15 defense. I honestly don't. That's not hatred. That's just what I have seen. <laughs> That's the evidence of the last 10 years. <laughs> I didn't see that one. That's a good one. Yeah, that's, that's a good that's, one, Rhino. That's, that's a good one, Rhino. 
I'm really looking forward to Thursday, Rhino. You and uh, Brunswick, I, I, it's going to be a pleasure to meet him, and the four of us are going to have some fun, I, I, in all honesty. In all seriousness, if you don't subscribe to uh, Minnesota Sports Talk and you're watching on my channel, please do. If you don't subscribe to Purple and Gold Today's, please do. If you don't subscribe to Vikings Uncensored, please do. Um, I know there's been a lot of videos out there in the last couple of days about trades and mock drafts and about Kirk Cousins this, Kirk Cousins that. As I said, I am amazingly enough, I was only going to go for about 20 minutes. I ended up going for an hour because I had a bunch of people in the chat and a lot of people that were here tonight, too. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, I promise one of these weeks we're going to go under the lights and we won't have one of these elongated Kirk Cousins conversations. One of these weeks. Don't plan on it being any. You didn't expect this after your guys' Thursday show? No, of course I did. did by the <laughs> way, did you, by the way, did you watch the Thursday show or no? Yeah, I stayed the whole time. Okay, I wasn't sure if you stayed the whole time. Yes, one hundred. Yeah, I was episode. like, uh, I want to. Um, uh, we're not. You know, this is nothing personal against Kurt, but yeah, I want to curb stomp him, which well, means you got also understand which that means put your teeth on the curb of a you yeah. know curb of a yeah, you know, a know. street yeah, and kick. Kick his teeth out. Kick his teeth out. But hey, we had a disclaimer, so it was nothing personal. All right. It says, yeah, so that's a little overboard, but I, I know. Oh, uh, Mary, you are still here. Thank you so much for joining, Mary. Mary, put it in the comments earlier as she said, hey, put that comment that Mary said about me uh, having a great show last night because you know you put all your comments up about people saying you were good. So, and I'll just, it's way back up there, so don't worry about it. I'm just joking. But in all seriousness, I want to thank everybody for joining us again. Vikings Uncensored, go subscribe to that. Uh, again, that episode will air at 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time on Friday. Uh, uh, Dave and I are going to be recording with uh, Rhino and Brunswick here on Thursday. It ought to be interesting. And that's their 100th episode. So we very much appreciate them bringing us on for uh, the century mark there. Uh, everybody that's in the school in this, in the chat right now, uh, Mary, uh, Skull Mafia, a couple, I can't see, obviously Rhino, of course. And uh, of course, now I'm freezing. Michael, thanks again for joining us. If I didn't say your name, it ain't that we don't appreciate you because we do all of this for you guys. Okay. We honestly do. I don't get paid anything for it. You, I don't know if Dave gets anything uh, for it or not, but in all seriousness, thanks everybody for joining. We love you. Anything else you got, Dave? Now that I hit all the disclaimers and go subscribes and uh, uh, go check out the videos and whatnot. 